Oh, hi there, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And what makes it so special, of course, it's a release of the new set here. hey -o. Yay! So, Throne of Eldraine is the new set, and it's all basically just ripping off all the fairy tales and just <laughs> copy, paste, put some words on the cards, and be done with it. Yeah, every fairy tale trope or every, like, fairy tale story, we're putting yeah. it into another one. I bet they thought it was, like, super cute. It's like, yeah, we're gonna do this. And then other people were like, man, y'all are just lazy. Yeah. Cool. Let's just catch on and ride that train. Right, exactly. But it looks pretty cool. I actually have only seen the white cards, so this is going to be like a do it live kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen very many of these cards either, so we're both going to be like, hey, yeah, yeah, we can yeah. see our actual reactions to the cards. Exactly. So it should be should be fun. But before we go ahead and get to, to that, just to go and remind you that we do have a Patreon, and it only takes a dollar to support us, and we'd love you very much if you do so, and therefore we can actually evolve and do more awesome things like this. And with this set, of course, how we do everything, we do like, if it's standard viable, modern viable, uh, just limited only, or it just sucks. Yeah. But we're brewers, so we think the crappy cards are really good, so <laughs> so it'll be pretty fun to just, you know, describe that. But even then, we do have our differences on cards, like oh, yeah. Cavaliers, they're good, he doesn't think no. they are. They might now with rotation, but we'll see what happens, you know, all that fun stuff. Yeah. But of course, this is a more relaxed yeah. thing here. All right. As always, the color breakdown will be down below. So if you don't care about any other codes except for blue, you just click the link and it'll take you straight to that part of the video. And we'll, you know, probably discuss you for what we think we, <laughs> the cards are about. Pretty much. All right. Pretty much. Let's get to it. Let's do it. White cards. Let's do it. All right. The first one. Acclaimed Contender. Two and a white. Three, three. So good stats already. It's a rare. When a claim contender enters the battlefield, if you control another knight, look at the top five cards of your library, you may reveal a knight or equipment or a legendary or artifact card, which is kind of weird. From among them, put it in your hand, put the rest of them in random order. I, it's meh. It's pretty good, it's really. It's like, if you build around it, of course it's going to be good, but you have to have another knight on the field, and if they kill it, then it's just a 33 for three rare for no reason. And the fact that it has to be a legendary artifact and not just a artifact card yeah it's just weird it's a build around yeah it's definitely a build around in standard i if you can build around unlimited that'll be really good yeah too. it'd be really good because there's it. less kill cards that will affect your board for sure so meh next up is all that glitters one white and one for an enchantment aura you enchant a creature enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control yay card's pretty silly pretty good. it's just two mana my dude's big yeah it's just another, like, Ethereal Strike that's one wide that does the same thing, pretty much, like his first strike. I like it. I will probably try to build around it, of course, but there's no Hexproof creatures to throw this on here. Yeah, but this card is definitely a good card in Limited, just yeah. because you have enough artifacts and enchantments you can use, and it just makes that dude big. It just gets real big. So really good in Limited, for sure. Now we've described what the, this art looks like, and we have no idea what's <laughs> happening. But Archon of Absolution, 3 white, 3-2 three flying, has protection from white, and creatures can attack you or planeswalker you control unless the controller pays one for each of those creatures. That base part that we love all the time on creatures. And now it's on a 3-2 flyer that can be touched by Teferi. Cyborg, I think, is really good. Could be in standard, for sure. Yeah. In limited, real good. Yeah, this card is actually kind of insane for what it, for, for an uncommon. Yeah, yeah. It's not like the crazy best, but for an uncommon, it's real, real strong. If anything, it's a 3-2 three, three, flyer for 4. And white. Yeah, with pro white. And they have to spin mana to attack you. I like it. Yeah. Next up, Arden Vale Paladin. One white and three for a two five with adamant, which is our first new keyword. And it is if at least three white mana was spent to cast this spell, Arden Vale Paladin enters the battlefield with a one one counter. So essentially adamant is you pay three of that color, I do believe, and yeah. special things happen. Yeah. I think this is... Like a filler card limited, but that's about it. Yeah, this card is only really a limited card. Cause like it's not worth it in standard. Really, not. there's a lot better cards for four. And a two five can block everything. So what's the difference between a three six and a two five? Yeah. Really. All right, Ardenvel Tactician, one and two white. Now we have the other mechanic here. We're going to show off, and it's called Adventure. So it has the normal creature card, and then in the bottom left corner it shows the venture that they go on, and it's basically a completely different spell. So. This one, Dizzing Swoop, one white and one instant. Tap up to two target creatures, and then you exile this card with the adventure 
and then then you can play the creature side of it after that now if you play the creature side of it that's it you can't play the spell part of it at all so you have to do spell first exile then creature and it's a two three flying I think this is super good and limited and maybe slightly in standard, but we'll see how it works. Yeah, so without a doubt, the adventure mechanic is probably the best mechanic you can get in limited. Limited, yeah, for sure. Because it allows you to have that one thing twice. Yeah, it's value. It doesn't matter what the other ability is, is you get to have two spells for one, which is ridiculous. So adventure is good in limited for sure. Yeah, and this one you tap two dudes, cool, next turn I play this guy. Yeah, it seems I, good. it's ridiculous. It's really good. Next up is a Bartered Cow. One white and three for a three three. When it dies or when you discard it, create a food token. Which is a new weird thing of the set and a food token is an artifact with pay two, sacrifice this artifact, you gain three life. Which is probably not gonna happen that much because there's a lot of synergies with creatures and everything else that deals with artifact food tokens, so. Yeah, it's cool, but it's just kind of a limited card and yeah, it's just a filler card really. It really is. The next one, Beloved Princess, one white, lifelink one one. It can be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. It's man, a filler limited. Yeah. I mean, it's really good to put that silly enchantment on. Oh yeah, for sure. Next up is the Charming Prince, a one white and one for a two two human noble. When he enters the battlefield, choose one. You scry two, you gain three life, or exile another target creature you own. Return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next instep. I like this guy a lot. This card is really good. Yeah. For two mana, you get to do what you need to. Kind of like a uh, Knight, Knight of Autumn. You just have the awesome choices to help you out in whatever situation you need. And I like this guy a lot. So standard viable for sure. So my question is, did he go to Strong Kirk and become a Noble? Because <laughs> he looks exactly like that card. Oh, yeah. I wonder. Yeah. Oof. Vampire coming to get him. That'd be crazy. All right. The next one. <clears throat> Circle of Loyalty. Four and two white legendary artifact. This spell costs one less to cast for each knight control you control, which is can be really good. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Seems good. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, create a 2-2 two -two knight creature token with vigilance, so eh. But you can pay for tap, create a 2-2 two -two knight white knight creature token with vigilance. For the long game creature control deck, for sure. This card is a bomb in limited. Yeah. Like a bomb. Yeah. Because you get to make dudes for free by playing legendary spells. Also, you get to make dudes for free for paying for it. Yeah. You're just like, cool, every turn you make a dude. Any token generator that's constant and limited just wins. Yeah, the card is insane. Next up is Deafening Silence. One white enchantment. Each player can't cast more than one non-creature spell each turn. Sideboard. That's pretty good yeah, sideboard yeah. card in, in pretty much any format. Right? It just destroys, well, even modern, it destroys Phoenix, if there is a Phoenix deck anymore, since, you know, Faithless Looting is gone. But it destroys Storm. Yeah. For sure. It wrecks Storm. And in standard, it destroys control. So, yeah, should be good. Yeah. Next one Fairy Guide Mother. One white, flying one one, but it has the adventure. Uh, Gift of the Fae. One white and one. It's a sorcery. Target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains flying until in a turn. It's a limited good time. Because if you play this one as a one one, next turn you actually get to cast a two one on this again. Like if you have two in your hand. Then turn three, you can do it. It's, yeah. I don't know. It's good limited. Yeah, very good limited. That's really about it. Next up is a Flutter Fox. White and one for a 2-2. Two, two. As long as you control an artifact or an enchantment, he has flying. Look at his cute little feet. That is pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, he only has them on the back feet, so like, does he fly doll dangly? Exactly. All, like, That's awesome. That's scary. Poor little guy. Yeah. Uh, limited. Yeah, limited only. He's, he's Meh. okay. Yeah. Four fine provisions, two and one white enchantment. Creatures you control get plus zero plus one, which is actually pretty relevant. And when it enters the battlefield, create a food token. So there's your artifact for that. So limited build around goodness. Because in limited, you want your butts to be bigger. And of course the food token artifacts, as you can tell, will help other creatures you have already. Next up is the Giant Killer. He is one mana for a human peasant, and he can pay one white and one with tap target creature and tap, and he's a one two. And then he also has the adventure mode, which is chop down, so a white and two instant adventure. Destroy target creature with total power four or greater, or with power four or greater. Yeah, I guess because of the kill for one, I don't know, that's why it's a rare. I think 
I don't know how to place this guy, to be honest. He's good in limited. Yeah, limited he's good because tapping a dude is always good. Standard, I don't know. He'll see play in standard in some form of either mono white weenie or like some sort of weird white control deck, but he'll yeah. he'll see play, but it's definitely not going to be very prevalent. Yeah, we'll see what kind of creatures come out of the woodworks if they're four or greater or not. Yeah, for sure. Glass casket, one one and one white artifact. When a glass cas casket enters the battlefield, exile target creature opponent controls with convert mana cost three or less until glass casket leaves the battlefield. Basically a journey to nowhere or passive, you know, any of those. But it's an artifact, not an enchantment, which is pretty weird. And it's a three or less, so that's pretty rough. It's a, it's good against aggro's sideboard for sure. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, next up, have, happily ever after, a white and two for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, each player gains five and draws a card. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are five colors of one card which you control, there are six or more creature card types among permits you control and or cards in your graveyard and your life total is greater than or equal to your starting life total, you <laughs> win the game. <laughs> it's super weird. So this is definitely a build around card. Yes. It's definitely a kind of bad build around card. If you But it's a build around card. If you open this for your promo, I am sorry. Yeah, I know, right? It is a rare, so it's it's neat. It's, it's cute. It's going to make for some jank crap in commander uh, decks, yeah, but... Commander. Or how about Niv Mizzet? You control all five colors in him, right? I mean, Does I that guess. work? <laughs> and then everything goes to the graveyard with Niv Mizzet, yeah? No. Oh, sad. Well, never mind. That'd be too good. Yeah, that's... It's weird. It's weird. I don't know. Don't trust that. Harmonious Archon. Four and two white. Mythic. He has flying. He's a four five. Non-Archon creatures have base power and toughness three... 3-3, three, three. and when he enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens, which are 3-3s. Three, that dude is awesome. Yeah, he is really, really good. He's like a new Grave Titan, kind of. Slightly. The fact that it makes all your opponent's dudes smaller than Archon. All of them. So no matter what, they either have to double block or kill him or something. Because, you know, they're... Well, I can't say Lyra anymore, but she's going to be gone. But, like, those Cavaliers, they're 3-3s three, three now. No matter what. That's pretty silly. Yeah, that dude's kind of insane. This guy's pretty good. I think he's going to be a sleeper hit for sure. Yeah. Next up is the Hushbringer. One white and one for a fairy with the one two flying lifelink. Creatures enter the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. Yep, this needs to happen. Yeah, this card is insanity for standard in all of the formats really. Because yeah. it's going to it's gonna be in all of them. Yeah. So sideboard for sure. All of them. Go. Yeah. Here's a vanilla dude. Knight of the Keep. Two and a white, he's a three-two. That's all it is. Yeah, vanilla limited dude. Yeah, That's what you need. Oh yeah. Next up is Lyndon, the steadfast queen. Yas queen, get it. Yeah. So three white for a three-three vigilance. Whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain one life. I like it. It's pretty neat. So hopefully, definitely dual or just mono white standard. Yeah, white we need to get there with that card. And life sanity. Life game matters with a Johnny's chosen or whatever. Yeah. Nice. Okay, next one. Lonesome Unicorn. Four and a white for 3-3 three, three Vigilance, which sounds pretty bad. But it has an adventure. It's called a Rider, Rider in Need. It's a sorcery. For three mana, create a 2-2 two, two White Knight Creature Token of Vigilance. I kind of feel like this card is just bad. It's kind of bad, but I can see it being the best filler card in Limited. I mean, I'll use it in Limited. It is a good Limited yeah, card, yeah. but I just... It feels bad. Because, like, turn three, you can play this part, and then turn five, you can play the other part, and you essentially have five man, uh, five power on the field with Vigilance. But, eh. Man. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Next up is the Mysterious Pathlighter. One white and two for a fairy. She's a 2-2 two, two flyer. Each creature you control that has an adventure enter the battlefield with a one additional one counter on it. Really good. Build around limited bomb, for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, next one. Outflank, one white instant. Outflank deals damage to target attacker and blocking creature equal to the number of creatures you control. It can be really good, but what if you board wipe and they play their bomb and then you can't kill it? But limited goodness. Yeah, this card's really cool and limited because you have a lot of dudes and kills not like really prevalent, but it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Next up is the Prize Griffin, and it's a white and four for a 3-4 flyer, and it's just a vanilla flyer, really, but it's super good and limited. Yep. Because it's just your limited bomb, really. It's a limited flyer that has a big butt. I mean, it's really, really good. We've dealt with Air Elemental, and it's the same card, practically. <laughs> Pretty much. 
Next one is Rally for the Throne. Two and one white instant. Create two one one white human creature tokens. Adamant. If at least three white uh, was spent to play the spell, so of course the whole mana cost, you gain one life per each creature you control. So it's okay. I mean, we'll see what happens really when you. It all comes down to it to tokens and such, but if you can gain life, you can gain life. It's okay. Yeah, it's pretty pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Next up is a Realm Cloak Giant, two white and five for a seven seven vigilance, and it's got an adventure mode, and it is cast off. So two white and three destroy all non-giant creatures. Hmm. Well, so that's kind of weird. Yeah, it's it's a very different card. I like it a lot though because it's. It's a wrath effect, and then it becomes a big dude later. Yeah, and the fact that it, there's not, not really that many giants out there, so you're basically destroying the board. So, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. We'll have to see how that works. It's, it's crazy it's a mythic, but I guess it's because it's two big things in one. Yeah. Next one, an old reprint, Righteousness, one white instant. Target blocking creature gets plus seven, plus one, seven until end of turn. Limited, maybe, probably don't play it though. Yeah, it's, it's really rough to the, play this card. The stipulations are too much. Next up is Shepherd of the Flock. One white and one for a 3-1 peasant. And he's just a basic dude. He's got adventure though, which is Usher to safety. So one white instant return target permanent you control to its owner's hand. I see that being played more than him. Oh yeah. And then you just have him as an extra added bonus. Pretty much. He's cool. I don't really see him doing a whole lot anywhere like spectacular. Yeah. But he is really, really cool. Usually in limited, a 3-1 is just a filler card, but the fact that you have a, also a protection card attached to him, I would definitely use it for sure. Alright, and the next one, of course, we have the Shining Armor for the Knights. One white and one, Flash, enters the battlefield attached to target knight you control. So basically a free equipment here. Equip creature gets plus zero, plus two, and has vigilance, so it saves the dude from combat. And if need be, the equip cost is three. So it's okay. Limited for sure. Yeah. Next up is a Silver Flame Ritual, 1 white and 3 for a sorcery, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature you control. Adamant, if at least 3 white was spent, creatures you control gain Vigilance. Meh. Yeah, it, the picture looks awesome, yeah, yeah. but it's kind of a meh card. It's super meh. I don't really think it's worth using. Maybe just one in limited, but that's it, yeah. but don't, don't do it. Next one, Silver Flame Squire, 1 and 1 white. Uh, two one, uh, another two one here, but it also has the adventure instant. It's called on alert. It's two and white. Target creature gets plus two plus two in, until in a turn and untap it. It's okay. It's pretty neat. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, the adventure is more than the actual dude, so right? it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's weird that we're getting the spells being better than the creatures yeah. themselves. Next up is Sir Alan the Lion's Claw. Two white and three for a four four human knight. He's a legendary. He's got first strike, and when he attacks, other creatures you control get plus one plus one. I like this guy. That dude's pretty good for being an uncommon, because he can do a lot for you. Oh yes, especially, uh, I would almost do this first pick in limited if possible, if like the rare is really crappy, because oh, it's yeah. a 4 4 first strike for five. That's just good in yeah. general. Yeah, oh yeah. All right, and the next one Trapped in the Tower, one and one white, enchantment or enchant creature without flying. A uh, enchanted creature cannot attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. So, it's sadly a, I don't know, worst pacifism yeah. for flavor, pretty much. And if the creature gets flying, this aura just goes away. Like, if you give a creature flying. <laughs> pretty sure I read that or heard that uh, earlier today, actually, so. so it's, That's kind of weird, yeah. It's kind of very weird, yeah. Next up is True Love's Kiss. Two white and two for an instant, exile target artifact or enchantment, draw a card. I think this card's very meh. Yeah. Because for two mana, you can do the same thing with a naturalized or any other of the exactly. kill an artifact or enchanted or card. Disenchants one white, right? And you don't. It's sorcery. Who cares? It's just bad. What was it? Venerable Knight. Uh, one white. It's a 2 1. When it dies, put a 1 1 counter on target now you control. It's a build around filler, which is not, not too bad. Yeah, it's definitely a limited card, but that's, that's kind of where it's at. Or if you're in standard, you just build it. Yeah. Next up is the Worthy Knight. One white and one for two two human knight. When you cast the knight spell, create a one one human creature token. Yep. Dude's pretty good in white weenie standard. Otherwise, I don't really see him doing a whole lot other way anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. If you can build like a sealed knight deck with this guy, it'd be really, really good. Yeah. Next one, Youthful Knight. One and one white. First strike, two one. 
pretty good. Just solid uh, limited card for sure. Yeah. And with that, uh, go ahead and end the white cards for there, and we'll go ahead and go into the blue. All right, starting off blue, we have Animating Fairy. It is a blue and two for a 2-2 flyer, and it's got Adventure, which is Bring to Life. Blue and two, Sorcery. And target non-creature artifact you control becomes a 0-0 artifact creature. Put four one counters on it. This guy's really good. It's a Windrake that you would play in Limited all the time forever, but now your turn two or turn one food token is now a 4-4. Four four. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty silly. Yeah, so it should be really good. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. Definitely get it. <laughs> All right, Brazen Borrower. One, two blue. It's a three one fairy. So it has flash, flying, and can only block creatures with flying. So meh. But it has a venture card to it. Petty Theft. One and one blue. Instant. Return target non land permanent and owner controls to its owner's hand. So it's like a Vidillion click with a, a bounce effect, and it's a mythic. That's kind of weird. Yeah, it's it's very different. I think it'll be pretty good though. Yeah. In all honesty, I think it's good to be able to bounce because turn five you can bounce and flash this guy in, or just bounce a thing and then wait later and then yeah, flash it at the end of turn. It's really good, but mythic good? I don't think so. Yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to see. Next up is Charm Sleeper, two blue and one for an enchantment aura. When it enters the battlefield, tap to an enchanted creature. An enchanted creature doesn't untap to its controller's untap stat. It's just blue control for limited. Yeah, it's it's a great limited spell. All right, Corridor Monitor, one and one blue, one four, so not too bad there. <clears throat> when it enters the battlefield, untap target artifact or creature you control. Eh, it's okay. Probably a limited card at best. At best, yeah. Yeah. Next up is Didn't Say Please, 2 blue and 1 for an instant. Counter target spell, its controller puts the top 3 of their library into their graveyard. Card's pretty strong for a, for a counter spell. Mm -hmm. It helps mill. It's not like the greatest thing, but it gets there. Yeah, and there's also a weird synergy I saw between like how many cards are in an opponent's graveyard, so it'll help out that for that for sure. Alright, the next one, Emery, Lurker of the Lock. 2 and 1 blue. It's a 1-2 Merfolk Wizard, Legendary. The spell costs one less for each artifact you control, so it can cost one blue sometimes. When it enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Tap. Choose target artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. This card's really good. Yeah. I want to see it in standard, and I want to see it in modern for sure. So I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, she's going to do a lot of things to a lot of different little areas. I agree. Completely. Next up is Fey of Wishes. It is a blue and one for a 1-4 flyer. You pay blue and one, discard two cards, return it from return it to your hand. And its adventure mode is granted, which is a blue and three. You may choose a non-creature card you want from outside the game, reveal it, and put it in your hand. So I think this card is actually kind of bonkers for being an adventure card, just because it's a 1-4 flyer that you can bounce back to then play as an adventure. Yeah. Then to play it as a dude again. And then just keep getting whatever cards you need constantly. Yeah, it's kind of silly to just keep doing three right. wishes every turn. Grab your foil for commander, and then standard, it'd be fun to play this. <laughs> yeah, standard, this would be a really funny card to play around. Oh, yeah. Next one, Fairy Vandal. One and one blue. Flash, flying, one, two. Uh, when, whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a one, one counter on Fairy Vandal. Now, that might sound a little awkward, but there's a lot of cards that actually just help you do that. So this guy can get really big and limited, or even in, like... Standard, there's a flash deck building it around for sure. This this card might help out with that. Yeah. Next up is Folio of Fancies. It is a blue and one for an artifact. It definitely is a commander card. Players, you have no maximum hand size. Pay X twice, so X and X. Tap each player draws X cards. Pay a blue and two. Tap each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into the graveyard. So yeah. In their hand, okay. So this can be like super fun against control and mill them out, hopefully. Yeah. So because you know they're gonna have six or five cards at least all the time, and then of course the XX. If you don't know, if you're new, then you have to pay. So if you pay four, you draw two, pretty much. All right. The next one is Frogify. It's a enchantment that we've always needed. One and one blue enchant creature. Creature loses all abilities and is a blue frog with base power one and one. So yeah, just good to get rid of big dudes. Pretty simple. Limited, it's a great in a card. Yeah. Standard, it'll be okay, but it's nothing crazy. Yeah. I think it'll still be used in standard. 
Next up is Gadrick the Wizened. Three blue and X. When he enters the battlefield, you draw X cards. When you cast a blue spell, tap target non-land permanent and opponent controls. This guy's super good. So this dude is like standard Arcanist the Omnipotent, which is kind of good. That dude's real good, and this guy's kind of insanity. Yeah, he really is. He's going to be played a lot. Yeah. For sure, all the time. <laughs> Alright, next one is Hypnotic Sprite. It's two blue for a 2-1 flyer, but it has the adventure. Uh, Mesmeric Glare. Two and a blue, instant. Counter target spell with converted mana costs three or less. So it's a basic counter spell with a 2-1 flyer behind it too. So it's really good and limited. Definitely. Yeah. Next up, into the story, two blue and five, instant. This spell costs three less to cast if an opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard. There you go. And then you draw four cards. <laughs> Which is insane. So you draw four cards for four, instant speed. It's gonna happen and it probably, I want to see it in standard, to be honest. Yeah, this card could actually make standard just because it is an instant. Sure, yeah. it costs four, but it does a you lot for you. You draw four cards. cards. Like, it, it, you don't really lose value for playing it and it because it's an instant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the next one, the Magic Mirror. Six and three blue, so nine all together. Legendary Artifact. The spell costs one less to cast for each instant sorcery card in your graveyard. You also have no ma maximum hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a knowledge counter on Magic Mirror. You can draw a card for each knowledge counter on Magic Mirror. <laughs> this guy is insane. Yeah, if this card's in play, you get to do a lot of silly shenanigans. Yes, but hopefully you win the game before you mill yourself out. Or you draw yourself out, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Commander, for sure. Standard, I want to see it. Yeah. Next up, Mantle of Tides. One blue, our artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, plus two. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, attach Mantle to target creature you control. And no. equip three. So uh, you can equip it for three. Otherwise, you can just free attach it if you draw a card. Yeah. Or draw two cards. So it's not too bad. It's I like that. It's okay. The next one is Marfolk Secret Keeper. One blue, zero four, so a good blocker. It has the adventure. Uh, venture Deeper. One blue as well, sorcery. Target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. So if you want to mill, you've got to mill. This is what it helps really. This is really good, actually, for a mill deck. Yeah, for a mill deck, this card's pretty insane because you get to play it first time to draw it to mill them, and then you get a dude to block. It's a block, a zero four form. That's yeah. really good. Next up is the Midnight Clock, a blue and two for an artifact. Tap at a blue. Pay a blue and two. Put an hour counter on Midnight Clock at the beginning of each upkeep. Put an hour counter on it. When the twelfth hour counter is put onto Midnight Clock, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library, then draw seven cards. Exile Midnight Clock. I like the flavor of this card. Yes. I don't see it being very viable, but I like the flavor of this card. Although it says of each upkeep, put an hour counter on it. So you can get to seven cards really quick. But yeah, like it's like what's the point? If you draw a late game then maybe the... I mean it's cool. It's cool. I want to see it do some things. Like, Limited it's cool just because it adds a blue every turn. You just get to tap at a blue, so that's exactly. kinda neat. Exactly. And you don't have to tap to put a, a midnight clock on it. Or a counter on the clock. So you can actually use itself for that mana. So essentially it's two. I don't know. It's limited, yes, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Next one is Mirror Maid. One and two blue enchantment. You have Mirror Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. So there you go. It helps you exile some other stuff or just helps with artifacts. I like it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Definitely a standard card or playable and then definitely limited. Oh, yeah, limited will be fun. Next up is the Mistford River Turtle, a blue and three for one five. When it attacks, another target attacking non-human creature can be blocked this turn. So the turtle picks up somebody who's like, let's go party. <laughs> yeah, let's go do this. Uh, limited, really good for sure. Yeah, definitely limited bomb, otherwise it's kind of meh. Yeah, because it's not going to die anytime soon. It's a one five, so the other creature doing damage, it'll work. Next one, Moonless Scavengers. Five and a blue for six, four, five. Enters the battlefield. If you control artifact or enchantment, return target cre creature opponent controls to its owner's hand. Yeah. Limited filler. I mean, it's yeah. kind of really good, but six mana is rough. I think. Yeah. Next up is Mystical Dispute. A blue and two for an instant. This spell costs two less to cast if you target a, targets a blue spell. Counter target spell unless it's controller page three. So, yeah, standard uh, sideboard. 
Yeah. It's better spell pierce against blue, of course. Yeah, standard it is definitely a really, really good cyborg card. Otherwise, it's just not yeah. that good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the next one is Opt. This helps you draw your second card for the turn. It's one blue, so it's reprinted in every set, I think. Yeah. Right? So scry one, draw a card. That's all it is. I mean, it's a great card. It's, it's gonna see play. Yeah. I'm just like, why are we printing it again? Yeah, but exactly. whatever. Next up is Overwhelmed Apprentice. One blue for a 1-2 human wizard. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into the graveyard, then you scry two. So they got a bunch of mill effects. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of mill effects. So that mill standard deck is going to be a thing. Oh, yeah. And that scry two is super viable for one drop. Like, what if uh -huh. you go down to six, you don't want to go down to five, but you have one or two of that guy in your hand to get your lands? I like it. Next one, Queen of Ice. Two and a blue. So she's a two, three for three, and here we go. Whenever she deals damage, combat damage to a creature, tap that creature, it doesn't untap. So it does a frost breath. So if you're swinging into two fives or two fours and you can't deal with it, there you go. But she also have a venture. Rage of Winter, one and one blue, sorcery. Tap target creature, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So really, really good calling. Yeah. Like, I would almost get as many as possible in a draft. Because yeah, it's so good. <laughs> draft this card's gonna be insane. Yeah. Next up is Runaway Together. A blue and one for an instant. Choose two target creatures controlled by different players. Return those creatures to their owner's hand. Which so it's neat and standard because you have to target one of yours and one of theirs, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. And with so many adventure cards out there, it's gonna be fun and limited. Yeah. Next one Sage of the Falls. Four and one blue, two, five. When this or another non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. So, it's okay. It's a looter effect that's late game. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Next up is So Tiny. One blue. Enchantment aura. Flash. Enchanted creature gets minus two, minus oh. It gets minus six, minus oh instead, if, as long as the controller has seven more cards in the graveyard. So, there you go. Just another way for Mill to survive. Yeah, it's good, limited. That's really about it. Yeah. Next one, still glaze, still gaze Griffin, four and a blue, two four, flying. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, Griffin gets plus two O until end of turn. I would not play this unless I super had to. It's kind of really bad mm -hmm. for the stats and the ability that it's not permanent. It just gets plus two until end of turn. So yeah, it's kind of kind of sad. Yeah, because for five mana, we've already seen a couple other dudes that are way better. Yeah, way better. Next up, Stolen by the Fae, two blue and X. Return target at creature with convert mana cost X to its owner's hand. You create X, one, one blue fairy creature tokens and flying. This card's pretty good. It's pretty good, but you gotta be careful. It's not X or less, it's just X. Yeah. So you have to be right on the money. Yeah, but still, I'll take that all day to bounce your dude and get that mm -hmm. on the board. Yeah, exactly. Next one is uh, Sari Eleonora, the discerning. Three and two blue has the power is star four uh its power is equal to the number of cards in your hand so there you go uh enters the battlefield draw a card so it may replace it itself and spells your opponent's cast it costs eleanor it costs two more to cast so it's like a frost titan ability wow she can be really really good yeah this this chick's real strong oh yeah especially if you just keep setting back you're just like okay i have her on the field uh go draw swing go draw swing Stuff like that. Next up is a Tome Raider, a blue and two for a one one flyer. Whenever it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Just helps the. I'll take it. Yep, I'll take it. We already have the element that does the same thing, but this actually works in limited. Next one. Turn into a pumpkin. It's three and a blue. Instant. Return target non land permanent to its owner's hand, draw a card. So it's okay. And then adamant, if you pay three blue mana, uh, you, you create a food token as well. So unlimited, it's pretty pretty good, and well, probably not in standard at all though. Next up is unexplained vision, a blue and four. You draw three cards as a sorcery. Adamant, adamant, sorry. If at least three blue mana was spent to cast this spell, scry three. We're about to go to X. X yeah, we're about to go to the X world, you know. But uh, this card's pretty. It's it's okay. Yeah. It's not as good as the other one because no. the other one's four for four. This one's okay, but it's. I mean, draw three, you can, you can scry three first, so it's kind of cool. Or you go second, actually. So you draw three cards, and then uh, you scry oh, three. Oh, yeah. Which is uh, not too bad, I guess. All right. 
Vantress Gargoyle. 1-1 one, one blue. It's a 5-4 flyer, but it can't attack unless the defending player has 7 or more cards in their graveyard. So with all the mill cards, you can get there really quick. And it, it can't block unless you have 4 or more cards in your hand. But you're not blocking with this guy. And then you can tap. Each player puts the top card of their library in the graveyard. So as an artifact, you can do that so you can activate him slowly but surely. So I like this card a lot. I do too. I'm going to build around him. Two mana 5-4 flyers are pretty strong yeah. regardless of what they do. Yeah, yeah. And it says it can't attack. So early game, you're going to have four more cards. So it can definitely block early game. Mm-hmm. Next up is Avantress Paladin, a blue and three for a human knight with flying and adamant. If at least three blue mana was spent to cast this spell, he gets plus one plus one counter. It's okay. Yeah, it's kind of meh. The picture's neat, and it's it's a good limited filler card, but that's really about it. Yeah. It's just sad you can have a 2-1 a flyer for two, or a potential 3-3 three, three flyer for four. Not, not, yeah. not that good. All right, next one was Wishful Merfolk, one and one blue. Defender, three, two, but you can pay two, one in the blue, and it loses defender, becomes a human until end of turn. It's super cute flavor. Yeah. But with the mana dump, it depends if you want to swing in it with it or not. <laughs> Next up is a Witching Well, one blue artifact. Enters the battlefield, scry two, and then you can pay a blue and three, sacrifice it, draw two cards. I like it. It activates all the artifact stuff and whatnot. Yeah, card definitely is pretty silly and does a lot. I don't know. It'll be good and limited. Yeah, for sure. I don't really see much play in standard, but it, I could be proven wrong. I don't know. It's one blue for describe to, which is pretty neat. Yeah, exactly. It'll probably be played in standard. With that, I'll stop the blue and we'll go on to the black. And the first card that we have is Aurora, first of the La Queen. Yeah, it's a three black symbol. So black, black, black. It's a two, three legendary elf noble. Noble is a new race, of course. Whenever her or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control each opponent loses one life and you gain one life and then you tap sack another black creature or draw a card she's really good i enjoy her quite a bit she is pretty silly definitely a build around card definitely gonna be used in standard and in limited she's yeah. a lot better in standard because you get to build around her but she's kind of a bomb card in limited because if they don't kill her then you could just be like play yeah. a lot of dudes just play a lot of dudes and you lose a bunch of life and you don't even have to swing it's cool yeah it's pretty silly. Oh, yeah. Next up is Bacon to a Pie. Two black and two for an instant. Destroy target creature, create a food token. It's a pretty good kill spell for, for a set like this. Yeah. It's it's kind of your basic kill card. Limited, it's a really good card. Especially uh, since it's common. So you can grab that as much as possible. Yeah. Standard, I don't really know if it's going to be used a whole, whole lot, but it is really good. Usually, in limited, sec they usually have a five drop kill spell every time now this is a 4-1 <laughs> and it's instant and you get a food which is yeah, uh it's pretty good ridiculous limited bomb all right next one is borrow witches four and a black it's a three four uh enters the battlefield return target night card from your graveyard to your hand it's just limited barely yeah don't, otherwise don't play this card <laughs> next up is bell of the brawl a black and two for a three two human knight she has menace and whenever she attacks, other knights you control get plus one plus oh. Really good. Yeah, this card is really good in any kind of knight aggro deck in standard, especially in, in limited. It's it's just it's, a good 3-2 card with menace. Uh, yeah. Three drop, three two menace is good enough, but if yeah. you buff up your other dudes, it's ridiculous. S especially this one, Black Lance Paragon, one in a black, three one flash knight. When it enters the battlefield, target knight gains death touch and lifelink until end of turn. So no one played that pirate card that did almost the same thing. Gives a, a dude plus one plus one death touch. This one gives death touch and lifelink. So we'll see how this goes. I yeah, this dude's gonna be seen playing limited for sure. Yeah. Standard he'll probably be like a cool little sideboard tech. I think. I think so too. Next up is the Bognati. It's two black and three for a three three flying fairy, and you pay a black and two, sacrifice a food. Target creature gets minus three minus three. It's okay in limited. That's really about the only place I see this card being used like, is in limited. Exactly. All right, Cauldron Familiar. One black, one one cat. Enters the battlefield. <laughs> Each opponent loses one, and you gain one. Seems familiar. Sacrifice a food. Return Cauldron Familiar from the graveyard to the battlefield. I like this card a lot in limited, and we'll see if it's a build around standard for sure. Because you can just block, <clears throat> sacrifice a food, put it in, lose a life, done. Yeah, that card's really pretty good. Yeah. 
Next up is the Cauldron of Eternity, 2 black and 10. Legendary artifact. This spell costs 2 less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. That seems good. Whenever a creature you control dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. And then a black and 2 tap, pay 2 life, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate this ability only any time you can play a sorcery. So there's definitely going to be shenanigans with this card immediately in standard. Oh yeah. It's just good. Like if you self mill your, you know, self mill, or have all your dudes die, and you just play this, and you, you just, it's, it's just good. Isn't I, I for now, Thran mm. Temple Gateway is pretty funny with this card, but soon that card's gonna rotating. So yeah, yeah, that'd be super sad. Yeah. All right, next one, Coljan's Gift, four and a black sorcery, uh, adamant, which means if you pay three black mana with the cost, it does something special. Uh, you may choose a creature card in your graveyard. If you do, return it to the battlefield with additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. So, there you go. It's okay. It's okay. Limited, it's really, really good. Yeah. And standard, I think Bond of Revival will probably just be used forever because it gives your creature haste. Yeah. But it depends. Next up is the Clackbridge Troll. Two black and three for an 8-8 eight, eight Trample Haste. Yes. I mean... <laughs> sure. Thanks. Whenever it enters the battlefield, a target opponent creates three zero one one white goat tokens. At the beginning of combat on your turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If that player does tap this troll, you may gain three life, or you gain three life, and you draw a card. You gain three life and draw a card. They don't. So, uh, there's nothing wrong with this card ever. I, I like this card because it's like, it's a weird throwback to their little hunted dudes they had back in the day in yeah, old Ravnica. Yeah, exactly. And those cards were awesome. Yeah. This card's really pretty good because it, sure, it, it taps down your 8-8 dude, but... You gain life and draw a card. Yeah, and people play Desecration Demon. I do believe that's the one where at the com at any combat you could sacrifice a dude, tap him, it gets a counter yeah. on it. You you draw a card and you buff up your life. Like this guy's insane. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy should be a mythic and an eight eight trample haste. Reminds yeah. me of Hogath. I guess. Yeah, he'll definitely be in standard. Immediately is what I'm gonna play with him for sure. All right, next one is Epic Downfall. One in a black sorcery, exile target creature with converted mana cost three or greater. Super good sideboard in standard, and I, I would use it in limited for sure. Yeah. Next up is an eye collector. One black for one on fire. When he deals damage to a player, each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. So help mill, it's a pretty good strategy. Yeah. Limited, it's just a good one on fire. Yeah. I mean, it has extra added bonus of mill, but whatever in limited, but standard, it could be good in a mill deck. Yep. Next one, festive funeral, four in a black. Instant target creature gets minus X minus X until on a turn where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. So it really depends if you're able to fill this up. I it's limited build around. I would not play this in standard though, for sure. Costs way too much to play in standard yeah, for yeah. what it does. Exactly. Because for four mana, you can just automatically kill a dude and get a food token. Yeah, yeah. This is very. Uh, be careful with this. Yeah. So Next try. up is the foreboding fruit, a black and two for sorcery. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. Adamant, if at least three black was spent to play this card, create a food token. Which means you can gain your life back. That's good. So this card's actually really pretty good, I think, for limited, because it's it draws your cards and you don't really lose life if you spend no black mana for it. So. Yeah. Or you can just be like, cool, I need to gain some cards. Great. And I guess we're spoiled with Read the Bones where you can scry and all that fun stuff too, so we'll see. And I don't know why the fruit's not an apple, because, you know, they're copying everything else. <laughs> but whatever. All right, the next one. Forever Young. One in a black sorcery. Put any number of target creature cards from the graveyard on top of your library. Draw a card. This is a classic black card that's been reprinted pretty much a long yeah. time. Yeah. It's okay and limited. It's really about the only place you even try to use it. Exactly. Next up is a Foulmire Knight. One black for a 1-1 one, one death touch. Cool. S solid. He's got an adventure, which is a profane insight, a black and two. Instant. You draw a card and lose one life. And then you can make it into a 1-1 one, one death touch dude. That dude's really good and limited just because he helps you do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Nothing like crazy. But for the most part, I think this dude's just going to be a 1-1 knight with that touch. Honestly. Agreed. In like, both standard and limited. And limited dealing with a, a death touch creature is insanely hard and annoying. Yeah. You just kind of have to lose a dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. All right, next one. Giant Skewer. One in the black. It's an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus one, which is good for two. But whenever... A, Equip creature deals combat damage to a creature, create a food token, and then equip cost is three. <clears throat> I think this is super good limited, and the fact if they double block, you get two food tokens, and it's just silly. 
Yeah, this card's actually really different because they don't really make equip creature deals combat damage to a creature. Yeah, yeah. As much as they make anything else, so it's kind of wild. They're just going with the flavor of a skewer and you're getting all that meat. I like it. It's cute. Definitely a limited awesome card. Yeah. Next up is Lash of Thorns. One black. Instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains death touch. It's a really cute combat chick for limited. Yep. And I don't really feel like it's doing anything else anywhere else. Nope. And if your dude gets death touch, why does it have plus two, plus one? Makes no sense. Sometimes you need an unholy strength. You know what? Yeah, maybe you just need to kill harder. Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right, the next one, Lockwing Paladin. It's three and a black, three, two, knight. It has menace as well, because you need that more in limited. Adamant, if you pay three black mana, you get a one, one counter. So it becomes a four, three with menace for four. And that's really good. Yeah, if it's you can pretty get good. There. That is a good stated dude that's for anything. For a good old common for limited. Yeah, limited bomb. Yeah. Next up, the Lost Legion. Two black and one for a two, three spirit knight. And when he comes into play, you scry two, which is weird. But I like it. I, I think it's a good limited filler card. Agreed. That's it's exactly. really about where it needs to be. Next one, Manel Melevent. Malevolent? Malevolent. Malevolent. There we go. I was trying to think of the movie. <laughs> Malevolent Noble. One in a black. Two, two. Pay two. Sacrifice an artifact or another creature and put a one-on-one -on -one counter on, on this noble. Could be good. Could be. It's a very hard could be. Yeah. This dude's kind of bad. He's kind of bad, but he's a bear with an upside, so I guess yeah. you just gotta worry about that. Next up is Memory Theft. A black and two sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards it. You may put a card that has an adventure that that player owns from exile into that player's graveyard. Oh, so if they do an adventure card and then they haven't got to cast a creature part, you can put it in the graveyard, so they can't do it anymore. Oh, okay. So pretty cute limited, for sure. Yeah. Even still, I wouldn't really play this card that much in limited just because it, it's discard. Yeah. It's not really that worth it. If you're not mind rotting on turn three immediately, it's not that good. Yeah. All right. Next one, Murderous Rider. One and two black, Zombie Knight. He's a 2-3 rare. He has a lifelink, and when he dies, put it in the bottom of the owner's library, which is kind of weird. Next, Swift End. One and two black. He has a venture. It's instant. Destroy target creature or planeswalker, you, and you lose two life. This guy's going to be used hard. Yeah, this dude is going to be everywhere. He's yeah. just really, really good. It's like a hero's downfall with a 2-3 lifelinker. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. Seems good. Definitely a standard card. Yeah. Definitely going to be a limited bomb. It's just a good card. It's great. Next up is the Osworn Knight. Two black and one for a zero zero knight. He enters the battlefield with four one encounters. He can he attacks each turn. And if damage will be dealt to Osworn Knight uh, with a wallet has one one counter on it, prevent that damage and remove the one one counter from it. Tis just a scratch is what this knight should say. Yeah. Because that's literally what it's from. Yeah, he is definitely going to be a standard bomb. As in a night deck, just because he gets to get big and go there. And I want to just keep putting like counters on him, because that's super easy nowadays. Yep. All right, next one is Order of Midnight. One and a black, flying, 2-2, two, two, night. Order of Midnight can block, but that's okay, because it's a 2-2 two, two flyer for two. And it has sorcery, Alter Fate. One and a black as well. Return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. It, it's super solid for limited, for sure. Yeah. And if... A night deck for a 2-2 two -two flyer is just good. Yeah, I will take that. Yes. Thanks. Next up, Piper of the Swarm. One black and one for a 1-3 human warlock. Rats you control have menace. Of course. Pay two, create a 1-1 one, one black rat. Pay four, tap, sacrifice three rats, gain control of target creature. That's kind of silly. It's super cute. So if you make any other kinds of rats or play any other kinds of rats, you're just like, cool, sacrifice these dudes, give me your dude. Yep. So... Definitely a card that's, it's it's going to be awesome and limited because it makes tokens. Yeah. So regardless of anything else, limited bomb. Standard, it could be built around, but it's kind of meh in yeah. standard. Unless you just have a lot of other rats and you're just like, oh, my dudes have minutes, die. That's exactly. what about it. I can't remember if the other, the no, the, not the relentless rat, but the other rat is going away. Can't remember at the moment, but that's okay. Next one, this guy's going to be seen play everywhere. Rankle, master of pranks. Two and two black fairy rogue. He's a three three flying haste, which is super good. Now, whenever he deals combat damage to a player, choose them any number of these choices. Each player discards a card. Each player loses one life and draws a card. And each player sacrifices a creature. And you have to go in that order, of course, if you choose all three. 
This dude is definitely going to see play he's everywhere. So good. He is great in standard. He's fantastic in limited. Yes. So he just does a lot. He just does everything you want, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah. pick that dude up. Like, even if you do... Well, that's why they do discard a card first, because you can't just make them draw a card yeah. and then discard, and that would be ridiculous, right? Yeah. Next up, Reaper of the Night. Two black and five for a Spectre. Whenever he attacks, if the defending player has two or fewer cards in hand, this gains flying. It's kind of terrible. Yeah. Uh, Harvest Fear is his adventure, and it's a black and three. Target opponent discards two cards. This mm. card is actually bad. Bad. I heard people say it's kind of good, but it's really bad. Although I give them props for being able to ride whatever that thing is, because that's horrifying. Yeah. For sure. Next yeah. one is Reef Soul. One and a black sorcery. Destroy target creature with power three or less. Seems good. Definitely a card in standard. Yeah. It's a good kill spell. It's a good old sideboard for the red aggro, for sure. Yep. Next up, Revenge of Ravens. A black and three enchantment. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life. <sighs> I'm in love. These are the kind of bleeding cards I love <laughs> so yeah. much. Yeah. Oh, ill-gotten gains. Let's let's play another one. Cause yeah. why not? Just whenever. Just don't attack. If you want to attack, that's fine. But yeah. you're gonna pay for it for sure. Yeah. This card is insanity. It's it's just a really good like planeswalker deck card. Yeah. And just it's a good build around card. Cause if you can play multiple or there's that new blue card that we talked about that copies an enchantment. Yeah. Just go ham. All right. Not smitten swordmaster. He's so smitten. One black, two one lifelink. Okay, Vampire of Night, cool. But he has a venture. Uh, curry favor, one black sorcery. You gain X life, and each opponent loses X life, where X is the number of knights you control. So it's definitely good for build around for sure. Yeah. That's pretty neat. That's about it for limited. Next up is Spectre Shriek, one black sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non land card from it. If you do, that player exiles that card. If a non black card is exiled this way, exile a card from your hand. So this card is still really worth playing, regardless of who you hit. It just gives you extra bonus if it's a black deck. Yeah. Which I really like this card because it's got that aspect, but it's just a good card. It's Thoughtseize you don't have to pay the mana for. The or life. the life, sorry. Yeah. And the fact that in standard, if you sideboard this in, if black gets really heavy, then you just... It's so good. It's ridiculous. All right, next one. Sire Conrad, the Grim. Three and two black, five, four... Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put in the graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, uh, Conrad deals one damage to each opponent. So, and then you can pay one in a black. Each player puts the top card of your library in your graveyard. This guy is weirdly silly and statted really nice for limited. Yeah, limited he's really, really good. He may cost a little too much for standard. Yeah. I don't know. He's cool. He's... he. To me, he's got a lot, he's got way too much stuff to keep track of. Yeah. That's why you play this guy on Arena, so everything's just done for you. And you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. okay, that's how it works. Yeah, he's really good, though. Definitely worth playing. Yeah. Standard, he could be used, you just gotta build around him, so. Yeah. Next up is a Tempting Witch, a black and two for a 1 3 human warlock. When he enters the battlefield, create a food token. You can pay two, tap, sacrifice the food, target Ooh. player loses three life. Nice. That's actually pretty strong. This is a really good limited finisher. Because you're just like, oh, you're, we're stopped because we both have huge boards? Yeah. Lose three life. Lose three life. Let's just do this every turn. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty silly. I think that's silly good if you can get that food generation going. Yup. All right, next one. Wicked Guardian. Three and a black, four, two. Noble. When it enters the battlefield, you may have it deal two damage to another creature you control. If you do, draw a card. So it can be good. It can be not. It can just be a four, two for four. Yeah. Meh. We'll see. Yeah. Limited, it's really pretty good. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Next up is the Wish Claw Talisman, a black and one for an artifact. It enters the battlefield with three wishes. You pay one, tap, remove a wish counter from this, search your library for a card, put the card in your hand, then shove your library. An opponent gains control of Wish Claw Talisman, activates ability only during your turn. I'm all about this card, actually. Yeah. Because it, you get two uses out of it, technically, and they get one. But... I don't care. That's that's a free card search. Like, yeah. They don't have any say on what you get or what you don't get. Sure, they get to go get their own, but without them having knowledge of what you're getting, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 
And with black, you're gonna be able to take whatever card they got out of their hand. If they did something for the future. Yeah. You know? Yeah, this card, I really like it. It's definitely a build around, but it's definitely a standard playable card. No. If you use this with Tristani, you just get your talisman back, I'm pretty sure, so you're good. <laughs> yeah. If you go Abzan. Alright, the next one is Witch's Vengeance. One and two black sorcery. Rare. Creatures of the creature type of your choice gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. This will definitely see play. Yes. It's definitely going to be sure. everywhere. Be like, oh, knights. Okay, you're dead. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, and that'll be the end of the black. We'll go on into the red. Next up is red. We're going with barge in. One red. Instant. Target attacking creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Each attacking non-human creature gains trample. This card's kind of busted. Limited is really, really good. Because it'll just end the, end the game for you. I mean, it is one mana for plus two, plus two, which, like, Trumpet Blast is three for, what, two, one, or whatever? It's one mana, give all your dudes trample. As long as they're not human. Okay. Sure. Great. At least it's not the other way around, but yeah, that card's really good for limited. Yeah. Alright, the next one. Blood Haze Wolverine. One and a black, two, one. Whenever you draw your second card from each turn, it gets a one, one. It gets plus one, plus one on first strike until end of turn. This guy is just meh. I think he's a filler, just in case. Yeah. Next up is Blow Your House Down. Red and two for a sorcery. Up to three target creatures. Can't block this turn. Destroy any of them that are walls. I love the flavor of this card. Yeah. Bar none. Like, this card's awesome. Yeah. Terrible otherwise. Agreed. But the flavor and amazingness of this is awesome. And that's all it's made for. Yeah. Limited okayness. Yeah. Next one, Bone Crusher Giant. Two and a red, four or three. He's a rare. When he becomes a target of spell, Bone Crusher deals two damage to that. Oh, that's not a downside at all. Does two damage to the spell's controller. Okay. He has an adventure as well. Stomp. One and a red. Damage can be prevented this turn. Stomp deals two damage to any target. Jesus. This dude's this really good. That is insane. Like, oh, your turn two play, kill it. My turn three play, I have a four three. Yeah. Oh, you targeted it? Great, take two. Take two. Sure, I'm in a giant growth and I'll take my two, but you can take seven. I mean, this I dude's really good. This guy is super good. Definitely going to be in standard a lot of places. Agreed. He makes red deck wins pretty silly. That's silly. Next up is Brimstone Trebuchet. A red and two for a 1-3 wall. Defender reach. It deals, you tap, deal one damage to each opponent. And when, it enters, when a knight enters the battlefield under your control, untap it. There has to be a limited card that does this every time, in every set. Yep, always. And I think my favorite pronunciation of trebuchet is trebucket. Yeah, trebucket. Trebucket. All right, next one. Burning Yard Trainer. Four and a one, three, three. He has trample and haste. When he enters the battlefield, another target knight you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample and haste until in a turn. So this guy is pretty good for limited, for sure. Mm -hmm. But it comes into play, the small dude is bigger, let's just all swing. Let's just do it. Next up is Claim the Firstborn. One red sorcery, gain control target creature with a cover mana cost three or less to the new turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste. Well, it's RP probably one of the coolest act of treasons I've ever seen. Exactly. Because it's not totally awful. <laughs> I mean, it costs one mana instead of three, three. so it's, it's worth it playing in limited because it's only one mana. Yeah. Sure, it only can get a three or less, but that's great. I don't care. I'm still going to kill you with it. Like, maybe standard sideboard if you build around, like, a sacrificial deck or something. Because usually it's hard to, like, pay mana to sacrifice because fling's in the set, too. Yeah. But with three mana, you can take a dude and fling it, and it's all good. Yeah. All right, next one. Crystal Slipper. One in a red artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus one and haste until in a turn. Or not until in a turn. Forever. Equip one. So... It could be good. Limited, just put one in your deck and you'll be fine. Yeah, definitely. It's pretty neat. It's just the equip cost of one just makes it easier to give your dude haste and swing. Next up is Ember Cleave. Two red and four for legendary artifact equipment. It has flash. The spell costs one less for, to cast for each attacking creature you control. And it enters the battlefield. You attach it to a creature you control. So it auto equips. Yep. And then equip creature gets plus one plus one and has double strike and trample. This card's pretty silly. Yeah, it's super silly. It's crazy. It's a mythic, though, but I can understand why a little bit. Like, yeah. Limited, this card is definitely a bomb, because you get to make one dude real mad. Yeah. And totally hurt. 
standard it's kind of a rough card to build around but if you do it right i think it'll work yeah because it hopefully you have a total of three dudes out and play swinging that makes the cost three and then you pay three to get something double strike and plus one plus one yeah this definitely can see playing on standard so just keep an eye out for it oh yeah in, in breath paladin three and a red four one haste adamant uh if you pay three red mana for this spell it enters the battlefield with a one one counter on it so it's a five two which a five two and a four one isn't any different because when you swing, they're gonna block. Yeah. That's it. And they're gonna have two power creatures all, all day. Yeah, it's kind of just a limited filler card. Yeah. Next up is an Emberith Shieldbreaker, a red and one for a two one human knight. Mm -hmm. Just basic That's human it. knight. And he's got an adventure of battle display, one red sorcery, destroy target artifact. I could definitely see this being like a really neat sideboard tech yeah. just cause it kills an artifact and it gives you a dude. So it's kind of a good idea. But I don't really see it doing much more than that. Yeah, pretty much. Agreed. All right. Ferocity of the Wilds. Tune a red enchantment. Attacking non-human creatures you control gets plus one and have trample. You have to build around it to have no non-humans. Or to have non-humans. And that's about it. Yeah, but this with Rhythm of the Wild? And you're just silly. You're just, rah, 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 just rah. swinging for days. Next up is Fervent Champion. And one red for a 1-1 one, one human knight with first strike and haste. Okay. Be like, oh, all right. When he attacks, another target attacking knight you control gets plus one plus zero. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then you equip equip abilities you activate that target him costs three less to activate. <laughs> this is raging goblin with all upsides. Yeah. Wow. That yeah. dude is uh, really really silly. He makes swords free for modern. You know they can go in the stone blade. This guy is good. Yeah, this dude definitely will see play in every format yeah. because of what he does. That equip abilities activate cost three less to activate him. Yeah. Shoot. Super good. Yeah, that makes any kind of sword or fire and ice or any of those swords just bust. It's just modern. Like, pay three. Nope, that, dude, that dude's good. That dude is super good. Yeah, all the formats, that dude's good. Yeah. Next one, Fires of Innovation. Three in a red enchantment. Here we go. You can cast spells. Oh. You can cast spells only during your turn. And you can cast no more than two spells, okay, per turn. You may cast spells with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of lands you control without paying the mana cost. This card is awesome. This card is so silly. I don't even care. This card is awesome. You're just like ah, free spells, great. Like wow. I can only cast two per turn. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I I, I like this card a lot. You know how many draw spells cost four? All of them, pretty much. <laughs> wow. So in a turn, I'll draw cards. No, because you only cast spells on your turn. Oh, your turn. Still. You cast for free. You just cast a, a draw spell and then a creature or that, a relevant card. That card's definitely a builder on card. It's going to be a silly builder on card. But I don't I don't know if it's going to be like crazy used a lot. It could be, but it's it's kind of janky to be used a lot, honestly. EDH can be really good. Yeah, yeah. Get your foils now, guys, kids. Yeah. All right. Next up is Fling. One red and one instant. As additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. Fling deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power. The flavor text. G yeah. Go ahead. Giants believe that tossing red caps at knights is the best way to deal with both. <laughs> that is fantastic. That is very fantastic. And it's just a staple good card it's, in everything, really. Yeah. Limited, it's really, really good. Standard, it's going to be used just because it's just like, hey, here's it's, some extra damage. That's silly. Yeah. All right. Iron Crag Feet. I don't know what that even means, but let's go with it. So one and three red sorcery. It's a rare. At seven red, you can only cast one more spell this turn. This card's really silly because it pairs really well with the other card that does seven mana. If you spend seven red mana, it does silly things. We'll get to it. See, I was wondering how much that did cost. It was seven or yeah. eight or I just. But this card is actually really funny. I, again, it's a build around card. Standard, it's going to be a build around if you play it. Mm -hmm. By no means is it like game breaking or game changing. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Could be wrong. Because if you're ramping into something, you better ramp into something really good. Yeah. Like Karn. I mean, like, yeah, you can't just play that and then play Karn. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of silly. Oof. I don't know. It'll uh, be used. Yeah, we'll see. 
Next up is the Iron Crag Pyromancer, red and two for a zero four. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, she deals three damage to any target. I definitely so, see this card being used in standard and in any kind of like weird red blue control deck, but otherwise I don't really see it being used that much. Yeah, limited if you have a lot of ops, because ops just makes this viable for sure. All right, next one, Joust, one in a red sorcery. Choose target creature you control and a target creature you don't control, of course. The creature you control gets plus two, plus one, and until end of turn, if it's a knight, then those creatures fight each other. So only if it's a knight, they can actually get a bonus. I don't know. We'll see. Limited, possibly not standard, though. Yeah. Uh, next up is the Mag Ratter. A red and three for a goblin. One, two. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create two one one rat tokens. Seems silly. Like I said, the draw matters deck. It's going to be there, possibly. I mean, it's okay. I don't really... I don't think it's all that good, yeah. but it's going to be a thing. Especially since it's a 1-2 for 4. Yeah. Alright, next one is Merchant of the Veil. 2 and a red, 2-3. Uh, you can pay 2 and a red, discard a card, draw a card. So it loots. You don't have to tap them. But it has a venture. Hackle. 1 red. Instant. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. This is really good for, you know, reanimator. Something like that. Yeah, this is a pretty good card. Yeah. It's nothing crazy, but it, it'll do the job. It's pretty solid. Next up is Ogre Errant, a red and three for a three four Ogre Knight. When he attacks, another attacking knight gains menace. This dude is a limited good card. That's yeah. really where I feel like he's at though. Pretty much. Alright, next one. Opportuni opportunistic Dragon. Opportunity with Opportunistic. Two in a red, uh, four three flyer, which is good for and it's a rare, so. Enters the battlefield. Choose a target, human or artifact, and opponent controls. For as long as it's in remains in play, you gain control of that permanent. It loses all abilities and it can't attack or block. Weird. Isn't so? My my question with this is, you could just be like, flash this dude in, steal your Gideon, right? If yeah, if you can flash <laughs> him in, you can steal their Gideon. That's that's my Gideon. It loses all abilities though. So it's just there, just chilling. Yeah, you don't get a game. And it can't attack or block. I don't know. This is weird. Yeah. Super weird. I don't know if it's good. I actually kind of think it is really good because it gives red a way out yeah. of stopping things because red doesn't really have that. And it's on a 4-3. I'm going to beat you in the face because I got flying hands. Yeah. Limited is really good because that 4-3 for 4 is good. Yeah. Next up is a Raging Red Cap. A red and 2 for a 1-2 Goblin with Double Strike. He looks awesome. He looks silly. Yeah, he looks ready. Yeah, he's good and limited. That's really about where he's at. Next one, Red Cap Melee. One, it's an instant. It deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker. Jesus, lava spike much. If it's a non-red permanent, it deal, it's dealt damage this way you sacrifice a land. So, sideboard definitely for standard. Or limited that's a, to destroy a red card. Whoo, that's a hardcore uh, yeah setback, but it's it could be worth it if you need to get rid of that permanent. It could be. Could totally be. But. <laughs> but. All right, next up is the Red Cap Raiders. A red and two for a 3-2 Goblin Warrior. Whenever he attacks, you, you may tap an untapped non-human creature you control. If you do, he gets plus one, plus one against Trample. Just good limited. It's okay. Limited card. That's really about it, though. Yep. 3-2 for 3, pretty much. Rimrock Knight. 1 and a 2, 3 and 1. It cannot block. And it has an adventure card, Boulder Rush. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. So you can pump something up. It goes in exile, then you pay 2 and bring it back. That's pretty neat. That's neat. Limited, for sure. Yeah. Next up, Robber of the Rich. A red and 1 for a 2-2 two, two haste reach. Weird. Whenever he attacks, if defending player has more cards in hand than you, exile the top card of your library. During any turn you attack with a rogue, you may cast that card and you may spin mana as though or mana of any color to cast that spell. <laughs> this card's pretty awesome. Yep, especially against control. Or just mono red where, where you're gonna have no hand at all. Yeah, this dude's pretty silly. Yeah, he's super good. I like him a lot. Standard playable for sure. Limited, he's going to be silly if you don't answer him. Yeah. Next one. 
Yeah, I like him too. Uh, Scorching Dragonfire, one in a red instant. Deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that creature or planeswalker would die this turn, exile it instead. Solid. Yeah, definitely a really good standard sideboard card. Yeah. Next up, Searing Barrage. A red and four for a instant. It deals five damage to target creature. Adamant, it deals three damage to that creature's controller if you pay three red. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I don't really think it's worth playing over any of the other ones. Yeah. But it's okay. Limited, but, it's good. Limited, it's really good because there's always just a five minute kill, deal five or whatever. Yeah. But that has upside. All right. The Seven Dwarves. One and a red, two, two. It gets plus one, plus one for each other creature named Seven Dwarves, like, just like Timberwolf Pack or whatever, Wolves. A, a deck can have up to seven cards named Seven Dwarves. Again, the flavor of this card is awesome. So you can only have seven of them, so cool. And they get big if you have each of them. Yeah, pretty much. Neat. <laughs> Standard as a build card. I mean, build around. I mean, you get to have seven. And limited just draws. Limited is kind of a bomb if you get a lot of seven doors. If you draft as many as possible, as seven as possible, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you get to seven and then you're like, cool, I'm done. Done. But, you know, it's what else. Oh, yeah. Next up is a Skull Knocker Ogre, a red and three for a 4 3 Ogre. When he deals damage to an opponent, that player discards a card at random. If that player does, they draw a card. Eh. He's cool. Yeah. I don't really know how useful he'll be, but he's good and limited as a 4 3 for 4, pretty much. Which is weird. Yep. Alright, next one Slaying Fire, 2 on red, instant. Deals 3 damage to any target, and then Adamant. If, the, if you spend all 3 red mana, it deals 4 damage instead. This card will be in standard. Yeah. For three mana for four. Yeah. I mean, flame javelin anyone. That's or, what this card was. Or char as well. But you don't take two damage. You just straight up yeah. to the face. This card's good. Yeah. Standard playable for show. Yeah. Next up is Sundering Stroke. A red and six. Deal seven damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three targets. If at least seven red was spent to cast this spell, instead deal seven damage to each of those permanents and or players. So, so that other card that we're talking about, this is the card it goes with. So you're just like, cool, I get seven red. Cool. Those three things take seven. Brow, brow, brow. Like, thanks. Early game. Control. Yeah, it's kind of silly. All right. Sarah, 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 the bold. Three and two red, three, three. When she or, or an instant or sorcerer you control deals damage to the player, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Tap. Uh, she deals one damage to any target. Any target, which is really good. Yeah. I think she's super good. Yeah, she is really playable. She's a limited, really, really good card. Yeah. Standard, she's probably pretty good. You just got to build around her, right? Yeah. And the fact that if you stall the board, then you can just tap her. Yeah. And then play whatever. Of course, you have to do the timestamp of the card, but still, it's just super good. Next up, Thrill of Possibility. A red and one instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card, draw two cards. It's a good setup card for any kind of those decks. Yep. Really, that's a really it's place is whatever you're building it set up into. It's just a reprint. It's all. Yep. Good. All right. Next one, Torbran, Thran of the Red Fell, one and three red, two four. If a red source you would control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. So mono red, eat your heart out. Yeah. Yeah, it's real good. Yeah, it's it's good. It's good. <laughs> Next up is the Weaselback Red Cap. One red for a 1-1. One, one. Sometimes your little red caps drive weasels. Yep, I like it. And you pay a red and one, and he gets plus two, plus oh. I like it. He's a knight, too, just in case. All knights need mounts. And yeah, dude, it's it's a pretty epic picture. Yeah, it's super cute. I like it. Limited card, that's really about it. Yeah, because turn two, you're swinging three damage, and they're like, okay, I'm behind already. Yeah. All right, of course, that's the end of the red. We'll go ahead and get into the green right now. And the first one is Beanstalk Giant. Six and a green, so seven all together for a star star. When it, it has power and toughness equal to the number of lands you control. So obviously it's probably gonna have seven or so. But it has an adventure. Uh, fertile Footsteps, two and a green sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. It doesn't come to play tapped, so that's pretty cool. And it helps itself get there. That, that card's pretty good. That card's really good. It's, I definitely would pick it up and limit it as fast as yeah. possible. Yeah, limited, it's fantastic. Standard, it's kind of... Okay. Yeah, and, uh, 
Uh, next up is Curious Pair, a green and one for a 1-3 human peasant. And he's got an adventure, treats to share. For one green, you create a food token. That's it? It's okay. It's Limited, okay. it's a cool filler card. And if you build around food immediately, then play this card for sure. Because yeah. there's just like one green, then I can do all the special things. Yeah. All right, next one. Edgewall Innkeeper. One green, one one. It's also a peasant. And when you cast a creature spell that has an adventure, draw a card. That's really good if you build around it for sure. A uh, limited goodness. Yeah, limited. Yeah. Next up is the Feasting Troll King. Four mm -hmm. green and two for a seven six Vigilance Trample. Okay. When it enters the battlefield, it casts, if it was cast from your hands, to create three food tokens. Okay. Sacrifice three food, return him from the graveyard to the battlefield, activate his ability only during your turn. Oof. This dude is kind of insanity. This? Yeah. This guy's gonna keep coming back no matter what. Yeah, because you don't have to use just his. Doesn't matter what food tokens you get him or how you get him. Exactly. Just, I need him. So you can reanimate him for super cheap, probably. But if you do cast him, you get to get him again. God, if you he's want. just a 7 6, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. He's real good. He's Standard good. definitely gonna be playable. Yeah. Vigilance. Limited bomb. Faux show. Next one. Fell the pheasant. One in a green. Instant. Deals five damage to target creature with flying. Create a food token. It's, it's one of those cards. It's a better plummet. Yeah, pretty much. Same cost and everything. Or, I mean, it's this set's plummet. <laughs> yeah. If you want to look at it. And it creates a food token, so it's yeah. good. Next up is a fierce witch stalker. Two green and two for a 4 4 trample wolf. Into the battlefield, create a food token. This card is really, really good and limited. Yeah. And it's really, really good with Wolfpack out ambusher guy. Yep. Like, this card is insanity in a wolf deck. The fact that it's a common 4 4 trample. Just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bar none, that's the lowest bar right there. Pick him up as much as possible. Yeah, and limited. this dude in limited is a bomb. Ah, he's so good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. Next one Flaxen Intruder. One green, one two. Now, when I saw this art, I thought it was going to be a rare and it's going to be super good. It's not good at all, to be <laughs> honest. So Goldilocks deals damage to target player. You you may sacrifice it if you do destroy target artifact or enchantment. <laughs> it has to deal damage first to a player. That's not good. <laughs> the adventure part. Welcome home for seven. Sorcery. Create three 2-2 two, two bear creature tokens. That's it. Like... Why? Why? Exactly. Why am I paying one more mana for the same amount of bears? Exactly. <laughs> like, that's, I just, that's a whole joke. It should cost five or something. Like, I don't... It's just bad. Yeah, this card's not so good. This card is probably the worst card in the set. Don't play it. Even though I don't know about that. It's an okay sideboard card because it's in disenchant on a dude. But you have to deal combat damage. What is, what is a 1-2 going to do? What is a 1-2 going to do? Deal damage to a player? No, it's going to run into a 2-2. A two -two. And then cry. All right, fine. Let's go it's going to run into a bear and get eaten, unlike the picture where it shows. All right, whatever. Bad. <sighs> it's bad. Next up is Garen Brig Carver. A green and three for a three, two basic dude. Mm -hmm. And he's got shields mine as an adventure for two. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. It's limited. Limited filler. Like, you don't want to play a bunch of pump spells, but when a pump spell comes with a creature, you're like, okay. Yeah, it's kind of worth it. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Garen Briggs Paladin. Four and a green, four four. It has adamant, so if you pay it with three green, it enters the battlefield a one one counter on it. And it can be blocked by creatures of power two or less. So no chump block in here. So it could be a five five for five, and it's okay. That's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Limited's good. Yeah. Next up, Garen Briggs Squire, a green and one for a two two human soldier. When you cast a creature spell that has adventure, it gets plus one plus one. It's pretty good limited card with adventure stuff. I agree. If you build around it, it's super good. Yeah. All right, next one. Giant Opportunity. Two and a green. Sorcery. You may sacrifice two foods. If you do, create a 7-7 seven, seven giant, green giant creature token. Otherwise, create three tokens. I heard people give this card crap. I think it's busted. If you're able to create two tokens, by turn three, you have a 7-7 seven, seven giant. What's wrong with that? And if you don't, then the next giant opportunity you play can do it. With the food left over. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I had to reread it. I was like, that makes sense. But yeah, yeah no. It's it's okay. It's, 
I think it's super good. I think, especially if you build around it, you can have a 7-7 seven, seven on turn 3. Enjoy that, please. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Next up is the Gilded Goose. One green for a 0-2 flyer. Enters the battlefield, create a food token. Pay 2, create a food token. Tap, sacrifice food, add a man of any color. No, turn 3, you can play Giant Opportunity with this card. Turn 1, Goose. Turn 2, create a food token. Turn 3, cool. I have a 7-7. Seven, seven. So I like Gilded Goose because it's like... The equivalent of a Birds of Paradise. Yes. As much as they're going to let us ever have a Birds of Paradise. At least. It's the closest thing we're going to get. It's still really, really good. Yes. And it's definitely going to see play a lot of places because it does a lot. I mean, it's Birds of Paradise is only useful on that first turn, right? Isn't that what? Practically. So there you go. Very, very awesome. The Great Hinge. Uh, seven, two... Sorry, I just thought of Monty Python again. <laughs> Legendary Shrubbery. 7, 2 green. This spell costs X less to cast, or X is the greatest power among creatures you control. That could be pretty good. Uh, tap, add 2 green mana. You gain 2 life. Cool. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it and draw a card. Wow. Yeah. It could be really good. Especially since if you can play it maybe for four, then you can immediately tap it for two green and gain two life to play something <clears> else. Yeah. I do like all these little legendary artifacts. They're pretty silly. I, they, they have some really good potential. I agree. Next up, Insatiable Appetite. A green and one for an instant. You may sacrifice a food. If you do, target creature gets plus five, plus five. Otherwise, it gets plus three, plus three. It's, it's a cute. good limited pump spell. That's really it, though. Yeah, it's cute. Next one, Keeper of Fables. Three and two green, four five, cat. Whenever one or more non-human creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. Meh. Limited, okay. Yeah, yeah. Next up, Kinrith's Transformation. A green and one for an enchantment aura. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a green elk with base three three. That's pretty good. Yeah, it replaces itself and it makes their big dude small. Yeah. It makes their big dude a pacify. That's kind it. of. Kind of. I'm still 3-3, but you're playing green. Hopefully you're going to be past that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I have bigger dudes than you. Thanks. Super good. Uh, next one. Love Struck Beast. Two and a green. Noble. It's a 5-5 five five for three. But it can't, uh, Beast can't attack unless you control a 1-1 one, one creature. And how do you do that? Hopefully by this. Heart's Desire. One green. Sorcery. Create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. So this is, of course, Beauty of the Beast, and it's silly. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I think it's good, too. Yeah. Because it's pretty easy to make a 1-1 one -one dude just to be like, cool, Crash 5. Great. And it doesn't say it can't block, so <laughs> yeah. you still can block turn 3 with a 5-5. Five -five. Yeah, definitely worth picking up and playing. Yes. Next up, Mara Leaf Rider, a green and 1 for a 3-1. Elf Knight, sacrifice of food, create target creature blocks, Mara Leaf turn. Mar Mara Leaf Rider this Mara turn. Mara Leaf Rider. That's a little cute taunting elf, but eh. It's neat. It's limited filler. Yeah, filler, for that's sure. That's it. Next one. Oak Ham Adversary. I was going to say Anniversary, but that's not it. A three and a green, two, three. The spell costs two less to cast if your opponent controls a green permanent, so automatically sideboard usage. It has Death Touch, and when it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. This card is good. Yeah. Real good. So I would say sideboard standard and then limited probably just play it because yeah. if you run into it you have a turn two death touch that draws you cards yeah it's pretty good it's good next up once in future it's a green and three instant return target card from your graveyard to your hand put up to one another target card from your graveyard on top of your library exile this card adamant if three green was spent return those cards to your hand and exile this mm. not too bad i like it yeah it's a weird setup card but I don't know. It's instant though, which helps you out with stuff. Yeah. If it was sorcery, I would not play it at all. No. Next one. Once upon a time. One in a green, instant, rare. Alright. If the spell is the first spell you cast this game, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. So immediately. There you go. Now, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or a land card from among them and put them in your hand. Put the rest of the bottom in random order. This card's been reprinted hundreds of times. And it's only rare because you get to cast it for free. On, the, on your first spell. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And it's instant. 
I like it. It's not really it's, anything crazy, it's but cute. I like it. That's cute. But for a rare slot, eh. Next up is uh, sumoing a bear. But oh. hey, sometimes he's got to do yeah, it. Yeah, he just suplexed there. <laughs> yeah. Out muscle, a green and three. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control, then it fights target creature you don't control. If at least three gain was spent to play this, the creature you gain, the creature you control gains indestructible. So it's the Gaston of the set. Yeah, literally what I was about to say, yeah. Gaston just doing some wrestle moves. Yeah, the card's awesome. Limited, it's just a filler card, but it's really good. But uh, I think it's super good, yeah. All right, the best card in the whole set. Here we go. Questing Beast. Two and two green for 4-4. Four, four. Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste. <laughs> Seems good. Now, it can be blocked by creatures with two or less power. Oh, okay. Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. Oh, okay, cool. And, and, when it deals damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player's control. What else do you need? And a card, ever. And a green card. So that's two four fours for four mana in green. Yep. This, I, that's busted. This one just has more. The other one has the only keyword that you, this one doesn't have. Yeah, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I will still take I, four four haste, haste vigilances all day. Yeah. And with that touch, just in case. Yeah. This dude is definitely gonna be playable all kinds of all, places. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. This guy's insane. Next up, Return of the Wild Speaker. Our boy's back. A green and four for an instant. Choose one. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-humans, or non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three. Huh? Yeah, it's a weird overrun with has different abilities. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of don't like it, but it could be useful. I'd say in limited maybe, but I would not first pick this card at all. No, yeah, I would say limited just extra if you get it. Yeah. All right, next one. Return to nature. One in a green instant. Of course, you get to choose one. Target, destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, exile target card from a, a graveyard. Sideboard, awesome yep, card. Sideboard all the way. Oh, naturalize? Get out of here. Yeah. yeah. Get out of here, No naturalize. more. We don't need you anymore. Yeah, good card. Next up, Rose Thorn Acolyte. A green and two for a 2-3 elf. Add one man of any color. And Seasonal Ritual is a green adventure. Add one man of any color. So if you need color filtering, cool. If not on turn three, you can tap it for any color. Card's weird. It's very weird. It's a limited okay card. It's yeah. a limited mana dork, really. Pretty much. All right, next one. Rose Thorn Halberd. One green. Equipment. Enters the battlefield. Attach it to a non-human creature you control. So immediately, a creature gets plus two, plus one. And then you can equip for five. Because that creature's probably going to die, and this is going to get sadly annoying on your battlefield. I don't like this card. I don't. The equip cost is way too much, I yeah. think. I don't like this card. Yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Whatever. Next up, Spore Cap Spider. A green and two for a 1-5 reach. So you gotta have your spiders. Yep. You gotta have your spider to block those you Gotta have them. Limited goodness. All right. We got Sire Farron, the Hedge Hammer. It's a two green, two two, so that's good. When it attacks another target creature, it gets plus X plus X, where X is its power. They've been trying to rework this type of archetype forever yeah to maybe. see if it works and it never does but maybe it will this time maybe we'll see we'll see limited it's pretty good yeah but otherwise i don't really know nope next up tall as a beanstalk green and three for an enchantment aura your enchanted creature gets plus three plus three has reach and is a giant in addition to its other types it's pretty good enchantment for limited that's yep. it that's it that's all next one troll of crumbs one in a green enchantment Enters the battlefield, create a food token. So there you go, that creates that. Whenever you sacrifice a food, you may pay one. If you do look at the top two cards of your library, you may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it in your hand. Put the rest of the bottom of it in your order. That's cute. It's a build around. I don't know how good it's going to be. Yeah, I don't know. It's super slow. Yeah. Next up, Toon Veil Tree Folk. Green and five for a six five Tree Folk. He's got an adventure, Oak and Boom, a green and three, adventure, put two on counters on target creature. This card is bad. Super bad. Barely don't play it, not even filler. I mean, maybe fill, but mm. it's bad. Next one, Wicked Wolf. Two and two green, Wolf, three, three. Enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. So simple as that. 
Sacrifice the food. Put a long encounter on Wicked Wolf. It gains Instructable until in the turn. Tap it. Weird. So wolves are an archetype now, even more than they were. Agreed. Because this set just brought two four-drop wolves that are both awesome. Mm -hmm. This dude's actually kind of insane. Limited, this dude's amazing. Because you're like, cool, sacrifice this food token, he gets Instructable. Yeah. Great. And if you block, you're just going to block and tap him. And it doesn't matter if you tap him or anything. Dude, yeah, this dude's awesome and limited. Yeah. Next up, Wildborn Preserver, a green and one for flash reach 2-2. Two, two. Whenever another non-human -cre creature token enters the battlefield, sorry, whenever another non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X. When you do, put X1 encounters on him, on the Wildborn Protector. That's really good. I like this dude a lot, yeah. Yeah. He is silly. He does some crazy things. So, you know, Simic Flash is probably going to be a thing, and this card's going to be one of them for sure. Yeah, yeah. Faux sure. show. All right, next one. Wildwood Tracker. One green, one one. Whenever it attacks or blocks, if you control another non-human creature, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So, okay. I kind of like him. Yeah. He's definitely kind of a... He's actually a pretty good uh, two drop, or one drop for green, because he becomes a two two on turn two. Yeah. Almost always, if you're playing him in this kind of deck. Most of them are non-human, so there yeah. you go. I like him a lot, actually. Next up, Wolf's Quarry. Two green and four for sorcery. Create three 1-1 one, one green boar tokens with whenever this creature dies, create a food token. It costs too much for this, and it's meh. Yeah, very meh. Super meh. Alright, next one is Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig. It's three green, zero, zero, but enters the battlefield with four wound counters on it, so it's a four, four for three green. Whenever another green creature you control enters the, under your control, put a wall counter on it. Then if your creature's power is greater than Yarvo's power, put another one one counter on it. Jesus, this guy's good. Yeah, this dude's going to get out of hand real quick. This guy is a four, three, it's a three mana, four, four, and then every other turn when you play dudes, he gets bigger. Yeah. Thank you. That dude is awesome. That dude is really good. That is it for the green guys. We're going to get into the multicolor. Next up on the multicolor, we got Dance of the Mance. A white and a blue f and X. Return up to X target artifact and or non or enchantment cards each with convert mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If X is six or more, those permanents are four four creatures in addition to their own types. That's weird. Yeah. That's really weird. It's a good ending card, but it's just kind of a weird card. Just build around, and especially for Commander. Use him for Commander. Yeah. Alright, next one. Doom Foretold! Two in black and white. Love the picture. It's an enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent. If that player can't, they discard a card. They lose two life, you draw a card, you gain two life, you create a 2-2 white knight to creature token vigilance, then you sacrifice Doom Foretold. This card's awesome. Okay. <laughs> So if they can't sacrifice a non-land, non-token permanent, all that happens. Yeah. Otherwise, they just keep sacking dudes forever. Yeah. Keep sacrificing things. And your artifacts. And your planeswalkers. But it's each player, so you and them. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Huh? See how this goes. So, I mean, if you can't do it, then you discard a card, you lose two life, but then you get it all back. Yeah. So it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of neat. Oh, and at your turn, if you you have to sacrifice this, then therefore nothing else happens. That's the problem. This is a weird card. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. It's definitely a play around card or build around, but I like it. It's definitely a everyone hates you at the table commander card for yeah. sure. Oh yeah. Next up, Drown in the Lock. A blue and a black instant. Choose one. Counter target spell with convert mana costs less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. Or destroy target creature with a current mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. Jesus. This card is amazing. Yes. It's gonna Super be played good. in all of the formats. Cause it's like, hey, you have a lot of graveyard, kill that, counter that. I don't care what you're doing. And uh, yeah. And especially if you play mill, you can do whatever you ever wanted with this card. Yeah, this card's awesome. This card is super good. Yup. Man, it almost should be a rare, that's weird. Alright. Next one, Escape to the Wilds. Three in red, green, sorcery. Uh, exile the top five cards of your library. You may play cards exile that way until the end of your next turn. 
you may play additional land this turn. This is a horrible card, except for Commander. That's about it. Because you have to pay for it. And if you're paying five, then what are you going to do? Yeah. You know? Sad. Next up is the Fae Burrow Elder, a green, white, and one. For a 0 0 Vigilance Treefolk Druid, mm -hmm. he gets plus one plus one for each color among permanents you control. Tap for each color among permanents you control. Add one mana of that color. This dude is going in and visit. <laughs> That's what this dude does. This is, that, this is definitely what that dude does. You play a red, one of every color, and visit. You make one of every color and be like, I'll play all the spells. And then he's a 5 5 as well. He's just like, right now he's a 2 2 for 3. He taps for 2 mana. And he has Vigilance, so you swing in first, and then you play stuff second. Yeah, this dude's awesome. Oh, this guy's dude's real good. Dude's gonna be good. built into all kinds of silly decks, I can already tell. He's, yeah, super good. Alright, of course the mainstay of Plank Walker, Garuk, he's back. Cursed Huntsman. Four red, or four black green, <laughs> with five loyalty. Zero. Create two, two, two black and green wolf croak creature tokens with, when this creature dies, put a loyalty counter on each Garuk you can control. Jesus. Minus three, destroy target creature, draw a card. That's standard. Minus six, get an emblem with creatures you control, get a plus three, plus three, and have trample. This dude is awesome. This guy is pretty good. It's a it's a planeswalker that can protect itself. Sure, it costs six, but it gives you two dudes. It gives you two dudes, it can kill a dude, and you draw a card, and then yeah. Stupid. That's and it. Those two two wolves are not legendary, so you can make multiples of them if he stays in play. Mm -hmm. And then when they die, he just gets counters to be like, "Cool emblem." Yeah, great. Yeah, immediately as soon as the both of the wolves die, because you can be like, "Okay, I'll double block this big creature." Now I can ultimate and get, and still have him around. Yeah, he's awesome. This guy's ridiculous. Next up, Grumgully the Generous, a red, green, and one for a three three Goblin Shaman. Each other non-human creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional one counter on it. Does this go in a goblin deck? I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Because it makes all the goblins have one one counters on them. And he's a 3-3 three, three for 3. He's cool. But he's also green, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see about that. He could that. be. Alright, Improbable Alliance. Blue and a red. I love this art for the name. It's an enchantment. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 1-1 blue fairy creature token with flying. Pay 6 for red-blue, draw a card, discard a card. I like this card a lot. It's a limited red bomb, because that's what you're going to build around. And to be able to have a, a blue control deck and you create dudes real early, super good. Yeah. Next up is the Inspiring Veteran, a red-white and for a 2-2 human knight with other knights you control get plus one plus one. Yep. He's just a really good lord. Standard okay. awesome. Yep, that's it. A Lockmer Serpent. Four blue black serpent. Flash 7-7. Seven, seven. Here we go, control players. Pay attention. One blue. Sacrifice an island. It can't be blocked this turn. One black. Sacrifice a swamp. You gain one life and draw a card. Blue and a black. Exile five target cards from an opponent's graveyard. Return serpent from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. Weird. I don't know how I feel about this dude. Me He either. could be cool. Nothing else. He's a 7-7 seven, seven flash for 6, which is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. But he has no evasion after that. And, oh, I guess you can make it unblockable, but you gotta sacrifice an island. To I, don't so. I don't know. I don't know, know about this. Limited. You can win Yeah, limited, that dude's gonna win you the game. But that's it. Next up, Marleaf Pixie. A green, blue, oh. and... For a 2 2 flyer with tap at a blue or a green. What's with these mana doors that beat people down? Jesus. Yeah. This is a really good mana door. Yeah. Gonna be used because this is just really good. Yeah. Alright. Oko, Thief of Crowns. One green blue planeswalker. So a, a Simic planeswalker. Let's see if it's good or not. Four loyalty start off. Plus two, create a food token. So it can only be used in this format ever. Plus one, target artifact or creature loses all abilities and becomes a green elf creature. Elk creature with base base power of toughness 3-3. Three, three. So it's a beast within in it. That's kind of really good. And it's a plus one. It doesn't minus. Then, minus five. Exchange control of target artifact or creature you control and target creature and opponent controls with power three or less. We'll see what this guy does. Yeah. Because to be able to be like, that 
artifact that's causing me problems or that giant creature is now at 3-3 at any time, plus one, done. But to be able to make a food token and then exchange your most powerful small dude for this token, okay. It's pretty good. Yeah. This is, definitely play around with this guy too. Next up is the Outlaw's Merry Mint. A red and two white and one for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one at random. Create a, create a red, white creature token with these characteristics or with those characteristics yeah. okay three one human warrior with trample and haste two one human cleric with lifelink and haste or one two human rogue with haste and when this creature just about enters the battlefield it does one damage to target <laughs> this is so weird i mean limited bomb you're gonna yeah win. limited it's really good because you're just like let's make some peoples and see what happens every day is we're playing roulette for four mana yeah and I bet the token creators were hated this card. Yeah, yeah. Like, R&D, are you kidding me? We gotta make three separate tokens for one <laughs> card? Yeah, hate you. It's pretty oh. neat, though. Yeah, it's neat. Limited, it's really good. Standard, it could be. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Play around, for sure. Yeah. The next one, the Royal Scions. One blue, red. This art looks cool. It's a, a five loyalty Planeswalker for three. Plus one. Draw a card, then discard a card. We all love that, right? Well, another plus one target creature cuts plus two and first strike and trample until in a turn that seems good that's ridiculous minus eight draw four cards then when you do royal scion deals damage to a target equal to the number of cards in your hand that's really pretty good it's good this guy that dude does some work he's super solid and you can play him in an aggro wizard deck and just have him just beat down for yeah. wins yeah, the twins make it to uh, the new set, and they look really good. And it helps you activate the draw. If you draw an extra card this turn, you yeah. do bonuses automatically. Done. Next up is the Savvy Hunter. A yeah. black, green, and one for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever she attacks or blocks, you create a food token. Sacrifice two food tokens. Draw a card. That's good. That card is really, it's really good. super good. This card kind of reminds me of a tireless tracker, and that dude got out of hand real quickly. Yeah, and I'm going to steal this from another thing I heard. It is the tireless baker, is what we're going to call it. Because oh, yeah. it creates food tokens all the time. And yeah. it draws you a card. Yeah, no, this card reminds me of a tireless tracker, and that dude was disgusting. Yeah, and it's a 3-3. Three, three, yeah, standard awesome. Standard awesome, limited, super awesome. Yeah. All right, next one. Shine Chaser. One white, blue, fairy. It's a 1-1 one, one flying vigilance, but... It gets plus one, plus one if you control a enchantment, and another plus one, plus one if you control the artifact. So essentially, it can be a three, three flying vigilance for three. So build around, but man, limited good because it's flying. Besides that, who knows? We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Next up is the Steel Claw Lance, a red and a black for an artifact equipment. A quick creature gets plus two, plus two. You can pay one to equip a knight, or you pay three to equip another dude. Yep. The knight decks are going to want this for sure. Yeah, this card is pretty good. Pretty rough for limited, sure. All right, next one. Stormfist Crusader. Black and a red, two, two. Menace. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card and loses a life. This card's awesome. <laughs> yeah, this card is I don't really, care. <laughs> this card's, this card's so good. This is, oh my god. It's going to initiate all the draw an extra card per turn. This is going to initiate, I can't even think about it, the one where if they take damage, it activates all the stuff. Spectacle. Spectacle, thank you. This one's going to initiate, I'm going to beat you in the face because I draw extra cards and I have a 2-2 two, two minutes. And I don't care if you have extra cards. This That card's awesome. That card's super oh, good. good. Limited, awesome, standard, better. Great. Yeah. Next up is the Wonder Mare. A green, white, and one for a horse, a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast a creature spell that has adventure, put a 1-1 counter on Wonder Mare. Seems good. So adventure decks, this dude's good. Otherwise, this dude is bad. Yeah, pretty much. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3. It's solid. Uh, Winter Moor Commander, white and a black. Two star? Death touch. Uh, toughness is equal to the number of knights you control. So there you go. It's a 2-1 by itself. Uh, when it attacks another knight, creature you control gains indestructible into the turn. This so, dude's good. This dude's really good. He's going to die as soon as you swing because they're going to be like, I can't deal with this guy now. But unless you have a bunch of knights, he's almost impossible to kill. Why is there like five cards in the set that have death touch so far? It's kind of ridiculous. It's kind of annoying, yeah. Baraska's going to be really used. Yeah, yeah. 
Next up is the Arcanus Owl. It is four hybrid of the white blue colors. Yep. And it is a 3 3 flyer. Angels of Battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact or an enchantment and put it in your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. It's a cool dig card. It's yeah. a limited filler. Yeah. It's really about it, pretty much. Next one, uh, how, how do you say that? Covetous Urge. Covetous. I've never seen that word spelled ever in my life. <laughs> Covetous Urge. It's a four Demir, so again, another hybrid sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non-land card from that player's graveyard or hand and exile it. You may cast that card as long as it remains exiled and you may spend mana, mana of any color. I like this card all the time. Yeah, all it's pretty it. good. Let me get your bomb, your Teferi, and I'm going to cast it myself. Thank you. Next up is the Deathless Knight. It is for Golgari, which is a 4-2 haste. Whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, return him from the graveyard to your hand. He was okay. He's okay. He's a returning dude all the time. So it's yep. pretty good. Not too bad. All right, next one. Elite Headhunter. It's a 4 Rakdos, so black-red hybrid. He's a 2-3 with Menace. You can pay 3 Rakdos hybrid, sacrifice another creature or an artifact. A Headhunter deals 2 damage to target creature or planeswalker. Limited okay, but you have to be in Rakdos and you have to be okay to blocking and sacking little dudes to deal damage. Yeah, that's about it. Next up is the Fireborn Knight. It is 4 of the Boros colors. For a double strike 2-3 Knight, super good. And you pay 4 Boros, he gets plus 1 plus 1. Yeah. That dude's pretty silly. This guy's gonna win games for limited for sure. Yeah, limited, that dude's a bomb. Man, it's ridiculous. Alright, next one. Lock Dragon. Four is it hybrids? He's a 3 2 flyer, which is good. Enters the battlefield or attacks. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. So there you go. Activates that extra caveat. Yeah. It's pretty good. Limited. Next up is the Oakham Ranger for Selesnia, and it's a 2 2 elf knight. And he's an adventure card. His creature side says tap creatures you control get plus one plus one. And adventure create two one one white human creature tokens for four mana. It's, I, don't, I don't know what to think about this card. I kind of like him just because he can make all your dudes get plus one plus one. So he's kind of like a lord. I like not yeah. like crazy good, but yeah, he's helpful. All right, the next one, Rampart Smasher. He's the Gruul hybrid for four, a five five. And can be blocked by knights or walls. So, yeah. Do that all the time, every time. Yeah, that dude's going to be seeing play because he's just big. Yeah, he's a 5-5 five, five for 4 and limited. That's going to win games. Next up is the Resolute Rider. 4 is Orzov for a 4-2 human knight. You pay 2 Orzov, return him. Resolute Rider gains lifelink. Well, you pay 3 and he gains indestructible until the turn. This guy is... I think he's my favorite of these hybrids. Yeah, he is really, really good. He's going to be super annoying. He's a 4-2, and then you pay 3 to give him indestructible at any time. Like, you want to block? No? Yeah, he's going to be really hard to deal with. Then I'm going to gain life. Oh, you're going to block indestructible. Maybe you gain life too. I don't... Screw you. <laughs> yeah, I win. Yeah, definitely. All right, next one. Thunderous Snapper. It costs 4... Uh, whoa. Simic. Simic. There we go. <laughs> He's a 4-4 four, four, Turtle Hydra. That's creepy. Whenever, whenever you cast a spell with converted mana cost 5 or greater, draw a card. Meh. Yeah, he's kind of meh. He's kind of meh. I mean, how many times are you going to cast big spells after that? You don't know. So it might be bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, with that, that is the end of the multicolor. And we'll get on to the good old artifacts and lands. Starting off our artifacts is a Clockwork Servant. 3 mana for 2-3 Gnome. With adamant, if it yeah. is colorless, uh, as long as if any of the, three same, the color. same color was spent, draw a card. Okay, yeah. I was just like, it doesn't have a color to it. I was very confused for a second. I'm sorry. So just any color. Yeah. So three of the same color, you can draw a card. Two, three for three. That makes that dude a lot cooler. He's a really good limited card, mm -hmm. but I don't really know other than that. Exactly. Next one, crashing drawbridge. It's a Two casting wall, zero four defender, of course. Tap creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. I like this card and the flavor of it's really good. Because it's just like, Ugh! and then dudes come out and it's tapped. Because, you know, you know, letting dudes through. I just like it because the drawbridge has a, has like a porthole on it so you can see the sharks in the moat. Like, oh, yeah, that's what just in case. Do. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes you need to. Next up is the Enchanted Carriage. Five for a four four vehicle. 
When it enters the battlefield, create two one one mouse creature tokens and crew two. <laughs> awesome. Flavor is amazing. Yes, agreed. Card is kind of meh. Yeah, agreed. But the flavor is awesome. In fact, that they also need to shove vehicles in every set now to make sure Kaladesh wasn't such a wash. Yeah. But that's pretty cute flavor. But yeah, nobody likes vehicles. No, no. Next one, Ginger Brute. One for a one one haste. Thank you. Colorless even. One. Ginger Brute can't be blocked by this this turn except by creatures with haste because you can't catch the Ginger Brain Man. And pay two, tap, sacrifice it, you gain three life. Because it's food. It, it is a food golem, by the way. Just to let you know. <laughs> I like this card so, a lot. So Technically, it's unblockable. Are you allowed to sacrifice some to all those things that say sacrifice of food? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I do believe a lot of people have said yes, but a video I saw of a pre-pre-release said no. I'm going to say yes, because he's a food golem. And they wouldn't it, have done to that. To me, it seems like you would be able to. Yeah, because he just says sacrifice a food, not a food token. Yeah. So there you go. I like him. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's awesome. I like him too. Next up is the golden egg. Two for a food artifact as well. Mm -hmm. Whenever it enters the battlefield, draw a card. You pay one, sacrifice it, add a mana of any color, or pay two, sacrifice it, you gain three life. Because it's a food. It's good. Yeah, it's really good. Next one. Hinge Walker. Three drop, two, two. Adamant as well. Spend at least three mana of the same color, it gets a one, one counter on it. So it's a three, three for three colorless, which can be good. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Limited, okay. Yeah. Next up, her Heraldic Banner. Three mana artifact. When it enters the battlefield, choose a color. Creatures of the chosen color get plus one, plus oh. Tap, add a mana of the chosen color. It's, a, it's okay. Yeah. I don't really think it's worth playing, but it's okay. It's one of those, like, if you need a mana fix, it has an extra bonus to it. So yeah, and it's cool. a limited, decent card. Yeah, pretty much. Inquisitive Puppet. It's one, yeah, one drop construct, zero two. Enters the battlefield, scry one. Exile it, create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. It's cute. But it's okay. Don't, I, whatever. It's, I don't think it's that good. Yeah, it's all right. It's neat. It's super filler. Next up is the Jousting Dummy. Two for a 2-1 Scarecrow Knight. He pays three, he gets plus one, plus oh. I love that he's been knighted. Yeah, he's awesome, but he's terrible. Yeah, exactly. It's he really counts as knights. If you need a knight, done. Go yeah. for it. All right, next one is, I, I'm glad I got every single one of these. Lockwing Gargoyle. It's one drop, zero, three. Pay for Lockwing Gargoyle gets plus two, plus zero, and gains flying until end of turn. So it's bad. Bad. Bad card is bad. Super mana intensive. Don't play it. No, thank you. Yeah. Next up is a Lucky Clover. Two mana artifact. Whenever you cast an adventure, instant or sorcery, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. It's not too bad. It's build around. Yeah. It's definitely build around and it's definitely pretty good. Yeah, go limited. All right, next one, Prophet of the Peak. Cost six, five, five, and there's a battlefield, scry two. Filler, man. Yeah, filler, angry cat. Yeah, man. Next up is the Roving Keep. Seven mana for a five, seven defender. You pay seven, he gets plus two, plus oh, and it gains trample and it can attack as though it didn't have defender. What's with these artifacts and thinking we got mana to spare? Yeah, I know, right? Hey, pay a bajillion mana to do a mediocre thing. Seven, seven, yeah, I'm trying to know. Maybe I'll not. just take my two, four, fours for eight. <laughs> it's Rebecca. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> right. Next one. Scald, scalding Cauldron. Jesus. One drop artifact. Pay three. Sacrifice it. Deals three damage to target creature. I think it's really good. Uh, definitely for a kill spell for like blue, white. Stuff yeah. like that. Definitely pick these up for limited. Next up is a Shambling Suit. Three mana for a construct with a zero, it's an X3. Power is equal to the number of artifacts and or enchantments you control. So this dude's really cool. Yeah. This dude could be a powerhouse real quickly. Agreed. Limited, if you get the cards, he's really good. Standard, oh. he's built around good. Yeah. Next one, Signpost Scarecrow. Four drop, two, four, Vigilance. Pay two, add one mana of any color. No. Why? Don't. What? Like, I don't understand it. You had me at 2-4 Vigilance, so he's an Ox, but then you pay 2 to lose 1 mana because you're screwed on mana. <laughs> That's so bad. It's so like, bad. I don't, I don't like it. It helps you splash, I guess. No, no it doesn't. I would just take my extra land and not care. Be like, I'll splash for that. Uh, right? No. Alright. Next up, Sorcerer's Broom. 2 for an Artifact Creature Spirit. Dancing Broom. 2-1. 
Whenever you sacrifice another permanent, you may pay three. If you do create a token, that's a copy of Sorcerer's Brew. <laughs> I uh, guess? Because you sacrifice a food token for two, then you pay three to get another broom. It, but it, then it doesn't stack. I don't think this is good. Flavor. Fat. All these artifact cards have been kind of meh right now. Yeah, why is there so many? All right, next one. Oh, cost two. It's a reprint. Sorcerer's Spyglass. Artifact, uh, of course, enter the battlefield, look at the opponent's hand, choose and name any card. And then, of course, activate abilities of sources with the chosen name can be activated unless they're mana abilities. Because it's going away in Exelon, and we definitely need this for Teferi. I think. Yeah. Spinning wheel, three mana, tap at a mana of any color, pay five, tap target creature. Meh. It's okay. It's okay. That's about it. This guy is really good. Stone Coil Serpent. X is going to give it to you. It's a zero zero snake. It has reach, trample, protection for multicolored. Remember that. Uh, enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. This is why all the other artifacts sucked, because this one is awesome. This one's super good. It gets away around Teferi. So even turn two, their turn three Teferi does not deal with it, and you swing it. Yeah, it just makes it this dude's just big. Because there's good. no double X, it's just this dude's five five. With reach, trample, and don't touch me. Yeah, don't touch me with kill spells. Not Morphy or Dreadbore or Assassin's Trophy. Like, none of those work. Yeah, this card's good. Next up is the Weapon Rack. Four mana artifact. Enters the battlefield with three one counters on it. Tap, move a one counter from Weapon Rack to another creature. Activate this ability only in, as a sorcery. Limited filler. That's yeah. it. And you can only do it as a sorcery, so... <laughs> Next one, Witch's Oven. One drop artifact, tap, sacrifice a creature, create a food token. If the sacrifice creature's toughness was four or greater, create two token, uh, tokens instead. Meh. Meh. I would do this as filler and only to creatures that are going to die. But other than that, don't. Don't. Yeah. Just don't. That is it for the artifacts. We're going to jump into the lands next. And mm -hmm. we're starting off with Castle Arden Veil. It is the white land, special land, castle out of can just tap unless you control the planes. Oh, nice. You tap add a white, or you pay two white and two, and you create a one one human token. So it's a different type of buddy land, right? Yeah, it's a weird buddy land. I like it, I think it's gonna be a good op, but this one's one of the better ones, I think. Maybe, we'll see. Next one, Cassin Embreath. Embereth. It's the red one. And there's a battlefield unless you tap unless you control a mountain. Tap to add a mountain, of course. One, two red, tap. Creatures you control get plus one until end of turn. Yeah. Man, it could be pretty it good. It could be good. Next up is Castle Garenbrig. It's the green one. Add a green and it on ton tapped if it's a forest. Pay two green and two. Tap at six green. Spin this mana only to cast creature spells or activate abilities of creatures. Yes, please. Yeah, this card's pretty silly. Yeah. I'll pay four to make six. Because this is like the closest that I think they'll ever reprint Kabak Coffers. Because they, they learn their lesson real hard. Right. Because that card was silly. And you ramp up real quick. All right, the next one. Yes. Castle Lachlan. <laughs> it's the swamp one. Tap. The swamp. We got this. One, two black. Tap, draw a card. Then you lose life equal to the number of cards in your hand. Only in aggro will you ever want to play this. Yeah, or so. Death Shadow, because that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Turn four. Yeah. I have a 13-13 Death Shadow. Thank you. Yeah. Next up is Castle Vantress. It is the blue one, so it comes in untapped to control an island. Add a blue, pay four, tap scry two. Good. It's okay. It's, it's solid. pretty neat. It's a good solid land in your in your control deck, but that's really about it. Yeah. Alright, next one. Dwarven Mine. So it's a mountain, it counts as a mountain. Tap, stab, manta. Enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more mountains. When it enters the battlefield untapped, create a 1-1 one, one red dwarf creature token. It's like a mainland? But not, and you have to have three other mountains before you even want to play this to get this benefit. Yeah, that's why it's a common. Yeah, it's neat. It's limited it's kind of cool because it's a free dude if you can get there it's still no, a free it's... dude i didn't say it was a good free dude <laughs> it should have a one one if it comes into play tapped because that would make it beneficial yeah all right next up is the fable passage you messed up wizards <laughs> tap sacrifice fable passage search your library for a basic land card put it on the battlefield tap then shuffle your library then if you control four or more lands untap that land 
Why is this a rare evolving wild? <laughs> Cause it untaps it, bro. Uh, if you have four or more lands, I <laughs> I don't know. I'm just gonna skip it. Just keep just keep going. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know why evolving wilds is a rare now, but it is. Oh, it's so horrible. Okay, well, <laughs> gingerbread cabin, I guess. It's a forest. And here's a battle film tapped unless you control three or more force. <sighs> Enters the battlefield untapped, create a food token. That's just bad. This is better than that rare that we just talked about. <laughs> so, you know. Next up is the idyllic Grange. It is the planes. Same thing. It has to have a three other planes. And yep. then when it enters the battlefield untapped, put a one counter on target creature you control. That's cool. That's cute. That's nice. But not for cool. I guess. Not on fifth turn. Mystic Sanctuary, it's the island one. And let's see, you may put a target and or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. That might be the best one. Maybe. Maybe. It's not into your hand though. It's on the top. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Don't, don't do it. it Next up yeah. is the tournament grounds. It taps as a waste or you tap at a red, white, or black. Spin this mana only to cast a knight or equipment spell. Best land so far. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it doesn't even come to play tapped. Like, are you kidding me? And it has three colors to mess around with knights. What is that stupid dragon? The three set tribal set that all of them came to play tap? Just yeah. eat your heart out. <laughs> yeah. Much. All right. Dragon's Maze. There we go. Witch's Cottage. It's the swamp one. Enters the battlefield untapped. You may put a target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. That can be good. Besides that, no. All those lands suck. <laughs> even the rare, the rare ones are, are okay. They don't even tap for different colors. I don't know. This is bad. These lands are bad. All of them. <laughs> okay. But it's evolving wilds, bro. <laughs> well, that is the end of the set review. Hopefully you enjoyed our outtake and outlook on all the cards. I'm pretty sure we liked some super horrible cards that you'll hate us for. <laughs> but we all can agree that Questing Beast is the best card in the set, I feel like. Yeah, and Stone Coil Serpent's like a hard second. That, yeah, keep your eye out for that guy for sure. Yeah, that dude's gonna make waves. Especially because it's gonna be Teferi Land out there mm -hmm. all the time. And uh, the stupid Hydra that's multicolored that draws you cards and stuff. Yeah. So, and this has a reach to block it. And uh, yeah. I don't know. This set seems a little underwhelming at first, but I hope it can be fun. Uh, one of my favorite colors, white, is not strong in the set, I don't think, and it makes me sad. A lot of multicolor stuff is really, really strong though, so we'll see how that goes. I, I think this set's limited is going to be one of the most fun limiteds in a while that we've ever had. Yeah. Because it's got a lot of really good synergy in its limited, but... Otherwise, I don't know. It's going to be pretty crazy. It's just hard when a set has a mechanic that's only for its set forever. That's it. Like food tokens, that's only going to be in this set. Yeah. And to build your set around it and hopefully the next set will complement and stuff, then sure, it'll be fine. It'll be a fun standard. Yeah. But until then, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this goes for sure. All right, with that, hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island, and I hope you have a good day. Goodbye. Later. Also guys, we just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all our future content, make sure you click that bell. It'll give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you very you much. much. We love you.